Hello, PBO people! We are back with Season 7 of the PBO, and we are here with the Stargazer Power Rankings. The draft is all done, we're getting set for Week 1, we're pumped up, we're excited. And uh, we are looking at the 14 teams in the highest division and ranking them from 14 to 1, just based on their drafts. Uh, with me, I have Za, uh, retired coach of the New York Malamars. Back again, guaranteed new champion, Season 7. Yep, and I am the also retired coach of the Alabama Alakazams. And uh, we're going to be looking at these teams, uh, starting with the Pittsburgh Scizors. Uh, we got them pulled up now. Right, they're pulled up? Yeah. Yep. Alright, so we got the Pittsburgh Scissors here. Uh, the Gouging Fire team. So I think this team has, you know, a few issues going on. First off, the, the Terra Captains, they're like uh, fine Terra Captains, but not really like super um, impressive in any means. Uh, I don't love Paldea Aqua as a Terra Captain. I think Muck is like oh, just fine, it's just okay. And I think Spiritomb is, uh, you know, it can calm mind and do all that stuff, but I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, something opponents are really going to have to worry about. And then beyond that, I just feel this team has, like, some very, very weird Pokemon that uh, ne can't necessarily pivot. Like, you know, they have Toad's Cruel and Orthworm and Porygon Z and Paldea Aqua and their other two Care Captains too. All these Mons that kind of just sit there on the field and have trouble both coming in and leaving in, you know, a way that feels uh, beneficial to the person who's using it. This team also has a, a pretty good speed gap between Torn and uh, Padre Aqua, 121 uh, down to 100, and uh, absolutely nothing in between that, which is uh, a little problematic. And like I said, I just feel like the, the pivoting on this team, uh, you know, there's DoD, which can pivot, and Torn is the best pivoter, which is, you know, nice. But I, I feel like uh, it's lacking in terms of being able to effectively get in the Pokemon that it wants. A lot of the Pokemon that are key types, like your Steel type being Orthworm, you know, your Water type being Paldea, Aqua, these are Pokemon that can't stay, they, they don't have the survivability for for the long haul in a battle. And I don't know if this team has the, the pure firepower, like the team's kind of weak if you look at it, it's pure offensive output. Outside of Porygon Z, it's not really doing a lot of damage, so you're kind of sitting around, you know, potentially passing wishes with Florges and stuff, and the team doesn't have the pivoting to sit around for a long time, or the recovery, in my opinion, with, you know, the likes of Paldea Aqua and Orthworm, and, uh, you know, Toad's Cruel, who I imagine gets Synthesis, but usually isn't uh, one to run it. Uh, I, I just think the, the flow of battle in this team is going to be, kind of be out of whack. The offensive pressure... That is going to be put on isn't going to be great uh you might have to run offensive torn which um it's good for sure but uh, uh i personally prefer pivoting torn the uh set that is more you know helping teammates shine and then gouging fire i don't really see like the support that gouging fire would need i see like one spiker two spikers and orthworm and toad squirrel two pokemon that i don't think are very good personally and then uh Deoxys defense gets spikes as well. But, you know, um, in terms of hazards, you actually have pretty good hazards. Uh, because you got the hazard control and Toad's Cruel and Regia Lucky as well. But I don't I don't love like the breakers that could potentially sit alongside Gouging Fire to, you know, deal with Pokemon that could uh, beat him. Like um a, like pure like strong ground types or you know something along those lines. I don't think uh, Peldea Aqua is going to be enough. I, I just think this team has very awkward cohesion. What do you think, Zah? Uh, so I had this one at 13, so one up from this, and it's strictly because Gouging Fire is so good. But I have, the first thing I think when I look at this, I have no idea how this team adds up to full points. It's just, it looks so lackluster. I don't know why, like if we drafted Deox's defense, it's not the Terra Captain because it's, Ben mentioned none of the Terra Captains are OP, and we've opened it up to having much stronger Terra Captain options than the previous seasons, but we're still using guys that kind of fit the old mold. Um, 
And I think you could perhaps use Deoxys defense to, to cheese one or two wins just with Terra as an unkillable psychic type that sets up. But without that, it's just kind of there. And as Ben mentioned, there's not breaking power. There's not sun. We might be better off just going into the free agency and just getting sun since it's sitting there. Because I'm not sure what our game plan is here. Like, Toad Scroll's kind of a do nothing guy. Uh, or yeah, Earthworm the, is kind of a do nothing guy. That's the best way to describe it. A lot of do nothing. Like, I don't know what the plan is. You know what I mean? A lot of do yeah. nothing Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon. Yeah, we, we don't. We don't see any direction. Like some of these, obviously, torn gouging fire are good, but they don't. Uh, they don't necessarily go right into each other because torn is a pivoting to bring in a big offensive threat, and gouging fire is not immediate offensive pressure. So you have nothing but Porygon Z to take advantage of the, you know, top three pivots in the game and torn. So you're not getting, and you don't have the things to facilitate gouging fire. The best setup on. So in theory, these things could be good, but you have nothing to facilitate them. It's just like a random list of guys. Yeah, it seems very lackluster. And like, we've, we've mentioned Porygon Z being like technically correct. I just think Porygon Z also isn't like the greatest Pokemon ever. You know what I mean? So like, if that's your main breaker, if that's your guy, uh, I think like people are going to end up having answers to it, especially because it's yeah. not a Terra Porygon Z. Yeah, so that's like... another one. We, there's I don't know why we have Deoxys Defense and or Porygon Z and neither one of them are the Terras. I'm assuming Porygon Z can Terra. I haven't looked. but I'm pretty sure it can. Um, I'm pretty sure it's... Yeah, it's under the low. points. Yeah. So I like... I, I understand wanting to have three Terra Captains, but like, I mean, you could do some cheesy setup stuff with Spiritomb, but really like you could just... we. I think the cap is... 190 so you could still you you know just drop the muck as a terror captain because you want it to be poison anyways and just use porygon z like i don't yeah. know yeah i would drop muck and uh peldea aqua and make it z and make it pz and then um you know like a, get some offensive pressure and get some like um get some offensive pressure for your torn in like dod who's also a pretty good pivoter because of teleport I get yeah. some offensive pressure for like immediate offensive pressure for them to go and do, like uh, take advantage of your good hazards. Like you don't need the toad scroll. Get a get a different ground because you have Reggie Alecky for your spinner. Get a different ground. I would recommend someone uh, a little bit stronger probably, uh, if you can manage to find something. And then Orthworm. Like I get Orth Orthworm's probably the best low tier like bottom like point t Terra or not Terra a Steel. Uh, but it's still just a, a very awkward Pokemon, in my opinion. It can do stuff, and in some matchups it's very annoying, but it, it can't heal, it had to run rest if it wanted to heal, and it, uh, a lot of the times, uh, gets taken advantage of hard by offensive, uh, pressuring teams. Alright, I think with that, we're good to move on to 13. All right, at 13, we've got the Norwalk Noiverns. Um, this is a team that uh, I got sent to me. And uh, then I helped with a little uh, post-draft. So I, I think, like, uh, I'll look at my notes. The main thing I have to say about this team is it, it really feels like you don't have a, a, a round one pick. Like, I like Iron Hands. We all like Iron Hands here. It, it kind of feels like you don't have an... It's not a Terra Iron Hands, right? So it kind of feels like you don't have a round one pick. You wanted to round one pick Iron Hands, which is, like, nice. But uh, it, it kind of feels like you have a bunch of, like, A- minus tier Pokemon to B tier Pokemon. Uh, you, you've got some major issues with... Uh, in my opinion, like some weird, like you just have a lot of weird mons that I, I think like are good, but not great. You know what I mean? Like non Terra Comfe, I think non Terra Mousehold, they're, they're, they're like, you know, fine Pokemon. I know, understand Mousehold is a speed tier. I, I actually don't even know why Comfe is here anymore, if I'm being honest, now that because Pre Marina is here. I thought the Comfe was going to be Terra and that's why it's here. But the Terra kind of shifted to Sinistra and then Avalagasui because uh, he had no spinner and then Frostmoth. So, um, you know, I, I like. I like Claude Zyre personally. It gets a lot of hate. I like it. I like Primarina. I like Incineroar. Like I like it. I like Jirachi. I like these Pokemon, but you don't really have like a, like looking at the you look at the, the sheet right. You look at the sheet of your opponent's team and you see this team and you're like, where's the guy? You know who is the guy? I, it's Iron Hands, but you, you don't have like the super like crazy out there, uh, monster Pokemon 
to make people scared. This team does have, uh, you know, for positives, a ton of pivoting. Full switch hands, flip turn, U-turn, U-turn. Uh, the only ones who can't pivot, I think, are Claude uh, and Avalug if I'm, and Sinistra. I think that's literally it. Claude, Avalug, and Sinistra can't pivot. But, you know, everyone else gets U-turn or something along those lines, which is, you know, really, really nice. Um, with Avalug, you know, your, your removal is decent. And you've got Claude's art of stack spikes, too, which is, you know, nice. Um, I, I think Sinistra is probably one of the best Terras in the game. I wish you were Terra Fairy. I really, really do. I think Terra Fairy is better than water by a pretty decent margin. Um, it, it just feels very middling. I think that like all the Pokemon feel very middling together because I can't really see like a super uh, powerful way that this team could uh, attack opponents. This team is also very, very weak to Earthquake and very, very weak to Stone Edge. Uh, a, a someone who carries, you know, Edgequake, a very, very common thing, would roll this team. The only immunity is a Noivern, which obviously Edge beats. And, you know, uh, Sinistra resists Earthquake, but it's going to tear out, uh, supposedly. And so does Frostmoth, although Frostmoth's going to take, like, 50 from any strong Earthquake. So, uh, I feel like this team is susceptible to some Edgequake shenanigans that could make it fall very easily. I think defensively... This team, like, in theory, is kind of okay. You know, you've got the Avalug and the Claude Zire and the Jirachi. But once you realize a lot of these, like, defensive Pokemon share common weaknesses, it becomes, like, you're going to have to run into defensive Noivern a lot, like, almost every week. I think there's some sustainability. Uh, there's some sustainability issues in terms of, like, stopping a full-on onslaught from uh, the ground type. And I... Uh, like, you have a lot of recovery, at least. You know, Roost on Frostmoth. Clodzire has recovered. Noivern has Roost. Comfey can obviously heal. Sinistra can obviously heal. Drachi can obviously wish. That's not the issue. I'm just worried about immediate damage coming your way and how you might be able to prevent that, uh, considering the Pokemon you have on the field. Uh, what do you think, uh, Za? So, this one I had last, I had 14, specifically, essentially what Ben mentioned is that it does. It seems like the first two picks of this draft are missing. Um, the, the, there's not a Gouging Fire, there's not a Dragapult, and it's another one, I look at this list and I, I, I think, how does this add up to all the points? Like, it seems like a lot of uh, Scotty Pippins without a Michael Jordan. Um, there's not anything without a, a choice ban or a choice specs that really scares me immediately. Like, hands does a lot of damage, but, you know, it's always going to be attacking second. It's not going to sweep you. We don't have a ton of, like, setup potential here without the Terra Captains. And, well, Sinistra and Frostmoth are, are really good Terra Captains. I still think that this is, especially with a drift like this where you should have more points... Not taking advantage of some of these busted Terra Captains that we have, like a Zarud, like a Seraledge, like a Volcanion. Um, these guys are kind of the best of the old way, not taking into account that we opened up three more tiers for Terra. So I think a team that, you know, ha should in theory have these extra points because it has no one over 150. And I think our tiers go up to what, 180, 190. So we should have, you know, more points here. There's just not a lot of stuff happening uh so mostly everything that ben said like if, if we don't win with uh, you know hands breaking and sinister or frost moth set up i think that's really our only way to win and i guess sustainability uh yeah i don't, I don't know what your win cons are you're just kind of sitting around for a long long time until yeah, you hopefully and, try and win with sinister and you know we have mouse hold as removal but that takes away one of our win cons which is set up and you know pivot uh avalug it's okay if you tear it, but then you're not tearing Sinistra and Frostmoth. So if you bring this for removal, you almost have to change the typing because it'll die to anything. Yeah, and that's actually at that a big point, conundrum. Yeah, at that point, you're not using your Terra Captains. And then also, while Sinistra and Frostmoth are both good, you could bring Sinistra and Frostmoth, but then again, if you bring Frostmoth and don't tear it, it's one hit KO'd by half the game. So I yeah. think the, the, there there's a lot of issues going on with this team. I think somebody who's good at stall and knows that I, I think you don't have the fast guy. If you had the same type of team with like Meow Skarada or you had the same type of team with like 
I don't know, roaring moon, something to knock things off and take advantage of the hazards. But you also don't have really a cleanup crew. I just don't view Neuvern that way to take advantage of the hands trade and the pre-marina trade and the spikes. So I think we're forced into Scarf Jirachi, which, you know, then we're relying on hacks to win. It just does. I, I think this can get wins, but I think it'll have the hardest time getting easy wins. Like this requires sev like significantly good play and strategy to win with this. Yeah, I mean, this team, it, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I do think, like you pointed out, all these Terra Captains really need the Terra, like, desperately. So I don't think you could bring all three together. I think it's almost impossible. Yeah. I think and Sinister is okay. Like, Sinister... Yeah, Sinister without Terra... With, yeah, with Sinister other, without Terra, come. you just can't do the Calm Mind stuff. You have to do, like, a Stun Spore, that kind of thing. Like, the support one. And it's, like, fine. Um... And one more thing, just like you said, I have no idea why Comfy is on this team. I don't yeah, understand. Comfy, not only does it uh, speed tie Jirachi, so it's not a speed tier. It's the same thing as Primarina. It's another support mon uh, when you have 10 support mons, essentially. Or 8 support mons in Iron Hands. And then um, I, I would get rid of the Comfy and I would get rid of the Mouse Hold. And I would use those points to find something, if you can. Um... I, I think that could be beneficial, hugely beneficial. And honestly, uh, maybe get, I don't know. I like the Sinistra. I don't hate Hisui and Avalog with Terra. Uh, yeah, definitely drop Comfey, drop Mousehold. Figure something out with those points, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I think with that, we're going to move on to the team at number 12. All right, coming in at number 12, we have the Moochin Embors. So this is an interesting place because I think we put them very low last season too, if I remember correctly, and they ended up doing pretty good. And we're doing it again, and uh, we'll see how it goes this time, right? Um, I think this team is really, really weird. It doesn't work super well together. So you've got Bundle, that's fine, right? Land Asterion, that's fine. Those are good. Those are strong high tier mons. The Terra Captains on this team, kind of odd. You know, I know what Malamar does in theory, right? I think you had it one season, but I think you dropped it, if I'm remembering correctly. It's um, the only Pokemon I've ever dropped. In so it's like, I, I don't really know if it's going to work the way that it's intended. Uh, the more Pico. I, I'm of the opinion that Morpico is bad. We'll see what Moochin can do with it. You know, Moochin's always doing some really weird stuff, so he can come up with something. But, you know, he's got Bastion on and it's not Terra, and the Morpico is. That raises some questions, right? That's, like, what's going on here. The Bastion doesn't have the Terra. Bastion's literally, like, 200% better with Terra. Uh, Meloet is a good Terra captain, but it's not, like, outstanding it's like good but not like, uh, like i'm not my, my, my socks aren't blown away and then the other five on the right side just some really weird pokemon like all these pokemon like delphox can wish which is good but it's not terra so offensively it's just fine but not great can Kelder, another like fine pokemon but like not outstanding it's really slow and it so it dies pretty fast i find you know having hisui lilligant without sun uh you know, in theory, it could work, but it's, like, really weird. I think Dragology is pretty good. It has no sustainability, but, you know, it can flip, turn around, and I, I don't think it's, like, bad at all, by any means. And Suicune, you know, Suicune's kind of, like, not a gimmick Pokemon, but kind of gimmicky. You, you should know. You should always fear the Calm Mindset. It can also be, like, Scarf. I've seen that uh, kind of thing before. But Suicune's not, like, outstanding either. So it's, like, a whole bunch of really weird Pokemon on this team, in my opinion. Um, it, you know, decent pivoting going on here. Uh, you, you got a double fighting thing going on with Conkelder and uh, Sui Lilligant, and they're both physical, and they're both mainly attackers. I don't really get that, uh, angle of things. Um, you know, like, like I said, the team, the team has some some weaknesses because of that, because of the double fighting. It's weak to fairy pretty badly, especially because your dragon, you, you know, your poison is also a dragon. So like, fairy spam is very real. I think the only resists are a uh, non-Terra Bastiodon and a Delphox. So like, imagine a fairy type that uh, spams fairy moves into them, or imagine a fairy type with ground coverage. This team also is pretty weak to ground. 
you know, the only um, resist in any capacity and the only flying type is Landorus, unless you want to Terra flying your Malamar, which is, you know, kind of, you know, out there, I would say. So uh, I, I think like just structurally, this team is struggling. This team also has a massive, massive speed gap between Bundle and Lilligan. You know, it's like 130 to like 105 or 106 or something like that, I think Lilligan is. Um, it has no fairy type on this team, in, again, favor of a fighting and a grass fighting. I just think, like, you've got a lot of weird stuff going on here, in my opinion. I don't know, it's kind of hard to make heads or tails of it. What do you think, Za? Uh, I think Mocha knows this team is bad and doesn't care. So, like, we, we said the same thing last year, and I'll say... Last year, whatever, last season. Say the same thing I said last time. If somebody rolls up with this, it, mean, it either means they're horrible or they're really good. And we already know Mushin is really good. So the positives, like everything Ben said is obviously true. And I'm sure Mushin would say the same thing. What are the positives? Uh, I think Delphox is pretty good. Like, offensive fire is really strong. And there's not that many of them. So unless you have it, you don't know like how useful it is. If you just click Specs Fire Blast, it does a lot of damage to almost everything, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a big um, proponent of Specs Heatran, so yeah, I, I do like yeah. offensive fire. It's a iron yeah. iron bundle every week. If it hits its moves and you play it right, beats every team all the time. Nothing actually stops iron bundle. So if it's gets on a hot streak, like the trainer gets on a hot streak, and you hit the hydro pump. It's the best mon in the game. It's just it's inconsistent, obviously, because it misses the hydro pump. But if you if you play against Bundle, uh, like this gen, uh, it's only in this gen. But you know, every time you play it, you're like, well, this thing just beats me, no matter what I do. I just have to play better than the other guy. So Moochin has this thing. If he plays better and he positions it right, it cooks everything. Lando T is maybe the most like ubiquitous Pokemon that if you have it, there's never a reason not to bring it. Every week it can do something, even if it's just Choice Ban Earthquake. The Gravity Set, which I think Moochin said he wants to run Gravity. So that's how he's going to get around the thing with Bundle with Hydro Pump. So he's going to run Gravity, Hisui, and Lilligan Hustle. I just realized that's probably what it's supposed to do. There you go. Um, I'm assuming Mel is Meloetta Terra Fairy. I can't actually see yeah, if it is. Yeah, Fairy and Ghost. Okay, so, so that, I'm assuming that, that's going to that, be his fairy, I guess. Yeah, that's the fairy. Meloetta is the fairy. Um, Conkelder gives strong priority. Um, I guess a trick room aspect with the Malamar. Uh, Morpico, I think, is okay. It's a really good low tier mon. It's a spinner. I don't know how Terra interacts with its hunger switch ability. I've never seen it. I'm assuming it still locks the type. And then Suicune's just annoying, right? Does Suicune still have Scald? I believe so. Okay, so Suicune's one of the only Pokemon that still has Scald, which is still probably the best move in the game. So, and then, like, Hasui and Lilligit, the only thing with Victory Dance, I... It can definitely, with this player, you know, with this team, we've seen what he can do. Like, he'll get a couple of sweeps with Lilligant with just that set. Um, so I, I had Mushin up one spot. Like, it, objectively, the team's bad. I'm sure he would say it's bad. But I would be surprised if this if he doesn't make the playoffs. Yeah, just, I, I, I I'm thinking he's making playoffs. I'm just based on the team. I have we have to put it like yeah, pretty low. I mean, he'd say the same thing. It's it's not obviously it's not good. Like everybody knows that. But there are strong points. There are synergies, even though the typings don't match. Yeah, I think like, hustle plus gravity, like I mentioned. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see of what nature. he's going for. Um, there's I, clearly I mean, a trick room. Yeah, there's clearly a trick room element with the Dragalgy and the Conkelder. I do really um, wish the Bastion was Terra. I really wish the Bastion was Terra. Um, I don't know if he thinks the same way, but I think Bastion is just way better with Terra. I'm wondering if there's some weird interact. What are the Terras on Morpico? Do you have it in front of you? Uh, electric, Dark, Ice, and Fire. I'm wondering if there's some strange interaction with its ability that locking it in like makes it better. The fact he has both stabs is Terra. Uh, we yeah. might have to look into that. So, audience, if there is an interaction, I don't he know what it is, but the, I think there might be. He probably just wants to have like the the move, aura wheel, and a uh, terra blast, so that way he can pick between the two, depending on what type he is for the type he wants. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if aura wheel is electric, then he can click terra dark if he needs to, or if it's probably something along those lines for the coverage. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, a, a very odd team. A very, but a very Kurth team. You know what I mean? It, it's just kind of what he does. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Alright. Moving on to the next. We got Sawdust Chimps and Boost for You. Alright, so the first thing I put for this uh, is that this team has some mods I don't like very much. I don't know if that's making it put lower than it uh, was, but it has a few mods and it's the fast guys. Iron Boulder, regular, non-Terra. I think it's bad, personally. I think it's a pretty bad Pokemon non-Terra. It's pretty weak. It gets kind of stoned by ground types, and there's a lot of fat, physically defensive ground types. Uh, and I don't love regular Tornadus, especially a round four regular Tornadus. Um, as you're too fast, guys. I just think it's very... Um, not the best thing in the world. To have those as like your main uh, speed, your main revengers. Uh, I do like slicking with Kiram. I do think that's really strong. I'm a big fan of that. Excadrill uh, without sand is much, much worse, but it's still decent. I, I won't stand by slander that he can't exist outside of sand, but um, he is worse for sure, significantly so. Uh, I do like to Dunsparce, especially Terra to Dun Dun Dunsparce. I think to Dunsparce is really, really good with Terra. Uh, I think Rotom with Terra is interesting, you know. It's, he, he, he gave it ice, he's doing the thing, where it's like the electric with the ice. But I think having Al Creamy as your fairy, non-Terra, is kind of sad. So your to Dunsparce is probably gonna have to be Terra Fairy, and maybe you just get rid of Al Creamy altogether, who really, in my opinion, without, uh, Terra is just not super great. Um... This team, it has like, um, so this team has pretty decent pivots with like the Dunsparce and Rotomo, but then it, when you get Kiram in and when you get Boulder in or Excadrill, none of those guys can pivot. None of your like super high tier damage dealers can pivot. So when they're in, they're a little bit stuck. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're kind of stuck in there for a minute. You know, you've got good hazards thanks to Quillfish and to Dunsparce and Excadrill, but, uh, and, you know, your removal is Excadrill and Decidueye. But I don't know if you want your Excadrill or your Dunsparce to really be running rocks. Uh, I actually don't even know who you want running rocks. I guess it have to be Excadrill or Dunsparce. Uh, Boulder doesn't get rocks, right? Does he? Maybe he does. No. No. Yeah. I don't think so. So, like, it, it, all of this stuff seems, like, decent, but in my opinion, it struggles kind of hard, a little bit, too. And it, this team also has a lot of weaknesses. I put this team... Because I put all their teams in the type chart. So I've got, like, uh, this stuff. Fire, Dark, Ghost. All viable against this team. Even though you have it in Dunsparce. Especially if you tear it out of it. Um, it can be problematic. Uh, dark type. You know, you can kind of just spam knockoff. Because uh, you don't want your Hesylian Quillfish, which is your resist, to uh, lose its Violite. And like I said, Al Creamy, I don't really love. Uh, it, it, it's not like major weaknesses, you know, because they have something that can take the hits, but you've really only got what you're one mon away from being really weak to a type in a lot of instances, in my opinion. Um, I think Ice could be, you know, problematic at times. Uh, Slowking is trying to take on the Ice and the Fire types. That's a lot to ask for the Slowking, in my opinion. Uh,. I, I, like I said, this team's pretty strong. You know, Kiram's really strong. Exodrill's really strong. Boulder is theoretically strong. In my experience, it's kind of weak, actually. It usually does, it doesn't kill at plus two, which is annoying. But like I said, I, I worry about this team's flow state. I think a lot of the time, the massive offensive threats are going to get stuck out on the field, and it could be a bit problematic. Probably a lot of substitutes run, is what I'm going to be guessing. Uh, what do you think, Saw? Uh, I... I like this team, uh, not a little bit more. I think I have this up one place. Um, just on the back of Kiram is kind of is a, an iron bundleish mon in that it beats everything every week. There's almost nothing that stops this because it has the physical and the special set. Uh, the the question always is, can the player figure out the line to get to it? And I also think both slow kings are like, if a competent player has one of these slow kings, it's such a devastating tool on a week to week basis. The other one's better most of the time, like Galar is better, but regular slow king is still such an annoying thing to deal with. I don't know why Tornadus is here either. I don't, 
uh, feel free, Boots, for you, drop in the comments of this video. Explain to the people why Tornadus is here in the fourth round. I mean, um, I, 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 like, you could do the acro stuff, and I know it's a speed tier because I think it's 111, but it's just not that good in my opinion. Yeah, it's know. just it's it's interesting because if he had made this as like his second to last pick, I would understand. But he clearly wanted this for some specific reason. If he picked it in the fourth round, because I picked Tornadus it. also because I needed 111 speed in like the last round. So I, it's not like it can't do anything, but uh, I agreed to Dunsparce, I think, is underexplored PBO. I think this thing could be really good. Um, I still think like a lot of the teams that have these some of the less powerful teams. Terra captains. I'm not sure it's worth it due to the team composition that they ended up with. They should have like tried Arcane on Hasui or something that's just like still sitting in free agency that's clearly like should be OP, like Haxorus, Iron Jugulus, Low Kicks is still sitting there, Mama Swine, Sandy Shocks. Like the fact Sandy Shocks is still sitting out there, which with one Terra is so good. Um, but you know, I think uh if I was going to run one of these Rotom's Terra, I, I don't know that I'd make it a bad typing. Like, I think I might just go electric um, yeah, for all I mean, of I know, them. I know why it's ice. It's because... Of, yeah. Actually, I don't know why it's ice, because this is the grass yeah, one. Not for it this has, one, because it has, it has access, grass. It, yeah, yeah, it beats browns. I don't know why it's ice. Huh. Um, yeah. I would make it... I would just keep it pure electric, then it has no... I guess for dragons. Well. That's such a weird... Yeah use case in my opinion for dragons your terra ice uh, i feel like that's yeah, i rare. guess we could have some so because we have kiram the dragon killer right so, yeah um i don't know that might be something to look at i think you'll get more out of the this especially this rotom just being electric uh, because if you take the reason mo isn't as good is because it's weak to u-turn honestly like it, it makes it significantly worse if you take that away like it's pretty decent um and I had this a little, like, yeah, but we don't like Boulder, like, I, without the Terra, like, we've just seen too many things where it always seems to come up a little short, like, it just underwhelms just a little bit too much, like, if it, it just misses a kill by, like, eight hit points or something stupid, um, and it feels like you just added it on here at the end, so, like, if we're looking at the 140 tier, like... I don't know. I feel like I might rather have Ogre Pond, Cornerstone. I'd probably definitely rather have Kakwavel if I didn't need the speed. Um, and then also you just have Tyranitar here if you really wanted to use it with the Excadrill. Although I guess you're trying to use the Snow. I don't know if those two things de necessarily overlap because Slow King's not just a Snow Setter without the ability. Um... But yeah, I, I think it's missing. There doesn't seem to be any, like, again, clear strategy here with some of the other than like Slow King Kiram, which is an obvious pairing. But I don't think either one of those guys needs the other to function. They just happen to function better together. So I don't know that that's like a strategy for the team. Um, but I like more guys on this team than any of the three teams we've seen yet. And I think the next one on the list. So I think I had this one at 10 or like one above the spot we're at right now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's very disjointed. Um, it's kind of slow because Tornadus isn't going to come to many of the games, so you really yeah, just so have really Boulder, Boulder to Kiram, which is pretty devastating. Yeah, and you're and you're locked into Scarf Rotom the majority of the time, I think, on this team, which is isn't terrible. It's a good set, but uh, uh, maybe... but on the back of on the back of just the power of Slow King Kiram, and I like the Dunsparce. Um, I think this is like a better than the ones we've seen. Although maybe Torn will come. He picked it fourth. Maybe it'll come every week. I, I maybe know. it will. Listen, dude. If you if, if if this is the way, hey, change the terror to Tornadus then. Like, let's see it. Let's see what he's got. All right, and we'll move on to the next one. I have this team once. Uh, I think two spots higher than you did. Yeah. All right. So this is the sunny side. Oh, are we switching back to Suicune's? From Scream Tales? I don't know. Okay. Yes. All right. We are officially switching back to Sunnyside Squee Tunes. The uh, Squee Coons from Sunnyside Scream Tales. Although they do have, uh, she does have Scream Tale. So this is Mug's team, and uh, it's a very Mug team. So I don't know if uh, 
the viewers watching probably don't know Mug, but Mug drafts pretty much the same guys all the time. She really likes Ting Lu, she really likes Cinderace, she really likes Screamtail, she really likes Corviknight and Thunderous, and you'll notice those are the top five guys. Uh, I do usually... I, I do think, though, for what it's worth, I've put this team, I've looked at it in the thing, in the, in the builder. This is probably about as good as a mug team can be constructed i think maybe it could be slightly better but if you get if you have to go for all these guys because mug she likes them a lot having you know an actual rapid spinner who kind of flip turn in blastoise is really nice having a uh, real speed tiers you know cinderace to cobalion to thunderous therian you know, Hoopa Unbound, who can be a Scarfer, and it's also a strong Terra Captain. While also having another strong Terra Captain in Vileplume, who's like a real Terra Captain. And a Ghost who's like a low tier, but still viable in Dusclops. You know, all these Pokemon are viable. So this team's really fat, obviously, as most Mug teams are. But it's one that I personally actually like. The defensive presence is strong, but the offensive presence is still there. The team has strong hazards through Ting Lu. And, you know, Screamtail and Cobalion, but can still get rid of hazards through Cinderace, Corviknight, and Blastoise. It has good pivoting through Cinderace and Screamtail and uh, Corviknight and Thunderous and uh, Cobalion. Uh, you know, not super obvious weaknesses across the board. Uh, the only real gap is between, like, Thunderous and uh, Unbound in terms of speed tiers. And uh, mug teams are usually going to have that gap. Uh, it's something that you can't really uh, avoid. The, the the offensive pressure actually exists on this team. And there's actually a way to get rid of hazards, which is just way better than a lot of her previous teams. I think this team could definitely be navigated to wins. Uh, so really what's holding this team back is just that it is capped by, you know, not having... A super like incredibly strong mon because Mug did go Ting Lu round one and then Corviknight round two because you know that's just kind of that's her and her element that's what she's comfortable with. So I think if Mug is going to go fully in on like her version of a team that she's super comfortable with, she's found a way to make the team about as good as you could expect. And this is about as high as like one of those teams could find themselves, in my opinion, because I actually do like it. What do you think, Saw? Um. So I I agree that given the parameters that are operating here, it's not as bad as it could be. Um, I just it, like with the amount of points we have when we see some of the other teams, I still feel like the the offensive pressure here is just not on that level unless things are go like we're gonna see band cinderace we're gonna see expert belt choice specs theory and we're gonna see band ting lu um we're, it i just i i want to see on a team that i'm gonna say is gonna like easily make the playoffs i need to see things that can operate without choice band and choice scar excuse me without choice band and you know attack boosting items essentially and still do the damage that we need them to do and I just don't know that we have enough here to compete with some of the higher up things. And she has to play really long games, 50, 60, 70 turn games, and just play better for that amount of time. And when you have to do that, I can't put you as high as teams that just can, they just have to they don't have to do as much to win. Like it looks cool with the guy who can dribble between his legs 50 times and then hit a hard shot, but I'm gonna pick the guy who can just dunk. Me personally, I also I don't know why Cabalion is here. I'm guessing it's for speed, but um, that's just a, yeah. I've never seen Mug use Cabalion. I don't know where this came from. Um, I like Viaplume. I'm interested to see Viaplume. I think it could be good. I think Unbound is good, but I I think it's one of these things that like this is essentially locked into Choice Scarf, and it's a good cleaner. Um, and maybe you could actually do something interesting with uh, Trick Room with this and Ting Lu. But in general, this is kind of locked into one item and spamming knockoff, which isn't bad. But I don't think it's as good as it seems like it should be. We've seen this in other leagues that we've played in where people have had this, and it's good. But it's not like 
as good as when you first see it or hear about it. You're like, wow, that should be busted. But then for some reason, it's not. Um, yeah. It being constricted to one type is a little bit um, annoying for Hoopa Unbound. Wh what is the type? Is it it's fairy? fairy, which I think is okay, like fine. Is, I think that's probably the optimal one. I might have just been dark and just yeah. spammed knockoff. I think fairy is decent. I do agree, like, you know, in, in theory, this team could have trouble killing things. Uh, Thunderous and Hoopa are obviously very, very strong. Um, yeah. Cobalion, I agree. It's kind of an odd Pokemon, but it's hard for Cobalion to fit on any team. I think if it was to fit on a team, this one's, like, decent. It's a it's a rocker, which, you know, if you don't yeah. want your Tinglu to be rocks, it's nice to have Cobalion here. It's not your so solo steal, which is really important, in my opinion, for Cobalion, because Cobalion doesn't resist Fairy, so yeah. you, need a, you need another steal. I do wish Vileplume got Toxic Spikes. I do like Vileplume, though. Um, yeah, Vileplume is my favorite part. I like I like Vileplume. I think Blastoise is a little underrated because it's an actual spinner. You know, it's an actual water type. And uh, Blastoise can Shell Smash, so it can be offensive, too. If like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if shell, Blastoise has Shell Smash multiple times. Just because everything else is so defensive, uh, it can afford to be offensive, which could be... I agree. Uh, I, I, like, I like Blastoise, too. I think it's good. Which could be cool. There's, there's nothing wrong with, with Mug's team. I just feel like this is the definition of, like, at best, like, a three or four win team. And that's not saying anything about the player. I just think it it will take so much effort for this to win games. Or we're going to see teams later, and I'll probably say it, that will fall into wins. That will just, like, mistake, like, misplay into wins. This team can't misplay into wins. It has to be piloted expertly to to win games. Yeah, I think I'm definitely a little bit, I mean, obviously, because I think I have it two high, places higher than you. I think I'm a little yeah. higher on this team than you are. I think it's yeah. like a, maybe it's probably because it, it's uh, more catered to a style that I play at times. I don't know. Yeah. But um, def I, I think this, I think Mug can find a way, especially because it's all Pokemon she likes. She actually got all the ones she likes, because usually she has Corviknight, but not Thunderous or something. Or she has like Tinglu and Stringtail, but not Cinderace. She actually has like the top five uh people that she likes that are actually good you know because mug has a lot of pokemon she likes but there's a lot of them that are bad but she has all the five that are like at least usable like high tiers you know what i mean yeah. so uh um, nope no fion though yeah no fion because she has all the, she has all the high tiers she actually likes so I, I think this is like prime mug team like we're kind of it's hitting its super saiyan form we'll see if it can perform right. we're gonna see and we'll uh go on to the next one Okay, so this team's really, really interesting. This is the Crown Point Titans. So this team, in my opinion, has a lot good and a lot bad. So I, it kind of, you know, mixed mashed in my head what I wanted to do. A little bit of bias because I just think I would like this team personally. And then uh, it kind of spit this out in the end. Uh, this placing, I think this is ninth, ninth place. Um, so. This team's highest speed tier is Bramblegast. This team's rapid spinner is Bramblegast. That's 90 base speed and no other hazard removal. Oh, you've got Defog Mandibuzz. That's true. So, um, I don't love that. That's probably the weakest point of this team. But this team does have Trick Room. And this team uh, is really, really fat. With Galarian, Slowking, and Alamomola. Two really good Terra Captains and Diancia and Satitan. Satitan who can sweep any week with Glare and Sloking and get the speed boost to break that Bramble Gas 90 speed barrier, so that could be something you're scared about. You gotta set up Bax and Ursaluna. Bax plus Ursaluna, the physical damage with Hariyama. The physical damage on this team is absurd. The the They're gonna be breaking you physically hard. They're coming at you physically as much as they possibly can. Um, I like the Trick Room angle a lot. I think this team's gonna run Trick Room probably more than any other team. Uh, it's just not very well rounded, right? This team doesn't have like insane special attackers. The most notable special attacker on this team is it's either Diancie or Galarian Slowking, right? So, yeah, uh, that's kind of uh, a problem. But you know, the team's fat. It's super sustainable. It has pretty good pivots. Uh, actually, excellent pivots, I would say. Uh, three of them: in Alomomola, Galarian Slowking, and Mandibuzz. Although, you know, the the big damage dealer, and Diancie's a good pivoter too, the big damage dealers like uh, Bax, Ursaluna, and Titan, they can't pivot at all, which is a little annoying for this team for sure. Uh, it's definitely a little annoying that that happens. Uh, but, you know, Diancie being uh, 
Terra. I wish it was Terra Fairy. I like Terra Fairy Diancie a lot for setup purposes and draining kiss. Uh, I really enjoy that. I think that's more viable than fighting personally. I know what the fighting is for. It's for that body press thing that it can do. I personally think the Calm Mind Draining Kiss stuff, because it recovers HP, is more viable by a pretty good amount. The um, body press is almost always bait on every Pokemon that does it. It's almost never necessary. The fighting Terra. But yeah, so like, I, I, I like the idea. I understand what it's going for this team. I like Hariyama, although I wish Hariyama was Terra, but I wouldn't get rid of either of the other two Terra captains. Um, so, coughing is you know cute it could probably come to a game it's actually it's not like horrible it can actually do something i've seen it happen uh bronze Lung is always good it just has a ton of resistances so i like this team it, it's clear what it wants to do in my opinion it's really strong physically kind of weak specially if i'm being honest like you don't really need to bring special walls into this team and also a lot of pokemon are going to be modest or adamant into this team so that kind of like chips into your bulk a little bit just because your uh speed tiers are obviously so atrocious in the sense that you don't have a very good high speed tier, because I think after 90, they actually all, like, work pretty well. Like, it's 90, and then 80, and then 70. Like, all the, they're all within that. Like, they all are within uh, a good spacing of each other. Uh, it, it's definitely interesting. I, 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 this is the most unique team, in my opinion, uh, this season. I'm interested to see how it does. Uh, the, the hazards, you know, you got spikes on Bramble Guest and Diancie. You got strong at hazard game, for sure. You got... Uh, Rocks on Bronzong. Uh, I think and you got Rocks on Dancy too. You got T Spikes and you got Spikes on Bramble Gas. You got T Spikes on Galarian Slowking. Uh, I, I think this team could definitely work. I, I, I think there's uh, something here for sure. What do you think, Zal? Uh, so, Hard Trick Room is kind of my thing. That's the most success I ever had, like in serious Pokemon, was with Hard Trick Room. The advantages of it are you have full bulk on everything, right? So the reason why this is tough to make work in draft is because your advantage doesn't work because the other team is just going to bring full bulk also. That's why I think this team would work better with one really fast guy. Like if you'd had Meow Skarada on this team or something that could threaten the beginning and the end of the game with cleanup, assuming if, because if you live a couple of fast, strong Pokemon on three health, they clean you up, they all run protect and then they clean you up at the end of the game, right? Um, so I think a move like that, like, I think a couple of these guys might be redundant. Like, I know why Hariyama's here. I know why Bronzong's here. You need a steal, right? I, like, Mola's here, but I think you still need one, even though it's hard trick room, you need a cleanup Pokemon. Like, something that makes them respect something, so that Dragapult doesn't come and run maximum bulk. Every, like, all the fast mons still get their bulk, right? Because that does matter. Because uh, it's taking away your advantage of the trick room. It's not, again, for just educational purposes for people who don't like see trick room a lot because it's a doubles thing. It's not just that the big things go first. It's that your max bulk and max attack end going first. That's why it's such a powerful strategy. Um, I also don't know if Diancie doesn't have Healing Wish. It seems like it would. But if it doesn't, I don't know that anything else on this team has it. Maybe a Loma Mola does also. It seems like something it would have. A Loma Mola uh, it does. Really... I believe Nancy does. It. Okay, then then that's that's much better that a Loma Mola is here. Like that's something else that it, that this kind of team really needs. I think it probably could work, especially because people just don't see it much. Like people don't know like room service is an item that you can run to help against this team. But um, it's definitely interesting. I'll be interested to see what it is. Like I said, I do think there's some redundancy, and if we wanted to like make this a championship team and overcome the fact that everybody knows what we're doing, essentially, we need something that could even be a like viable choice scarf for outside Backscalibur. Um, that's not like really being hurt by the fact that it would run choice scarf. That, uh, but past that, it this will win three games just because people don't know what it is. Like even if they think they know what it is, they haven't seen it. They don't know what it is. Um, but I, I do like it. I'm interested to see. Maybe Satitan can fill that role of late game cleaner. Maybe that's the strategy. I, I would just want something with like 115, 120 speed to end the game. Yeah, uh, but I outside agree. that, I, I, I like seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool strategy. It's something that PBO, like, no one's hard pivoted into stall slash trick room slash snow. Uh, no, no one's done this strategy yet in PBO, so it'll be interesting to see. Um,. 
Yeah, and with that, we'll move on to the next team. Okay, the Lion City Leech Life. I think uh, we've kind of hit uh, uh, not not like I, I think there's probably two gaps. I think we've hit a gap of like this team's pretty viable in my opinion uh, because I think I like this team more than the placement suggests at the end of the day. Because uh, I, I do like Ursula Blood Moon. I, I I like Golden Go. I think Ogre Pond is pretty good. The the Terra Captains are like. You know, it, it's a Vicavolt. Isn't the uh, I thought the Palmot was Terra. Maybe I was wrong. Um, the the v Vicavolt's a good Terra captain. I wish it was Electric is one of the options. I've seen two cannon uh work before. I think two cannon can be kind of cool, but like um, uh, like like Palmot. I don't know if it's Terra or not. If it is Terra, I think it could be kind of decent. Without it, it's like. The thing I'm looking at says Palmon is Terra. Two, two Terra types. I also like Two Cannon. I, I I also think Two Cannon could be good, unironically. Yeah, and then like Hydreigon and Gardevoir. I think both those Pokemon are fine. I I, I like I, I think they're good. I don't think they're amazing. You know what I mean? I think they're like fine Pokemon. And then I hate Fortress. I think Fortress is so terrible. <laughs> I, I think Fortress is one. It, it's a second steal, so I don't even know if you need that. I think it's like uh, as a hazard setter, uh, it's going to die fast because uh, it has no spit F and uh, everything's going to run a fire coverage for it. And even if it's not fire coverage, it'll still die fast. Um, and as a removal, it's impossible to spin because you can't hit ghosts. You don't punish ghosts in any capacity because you're so weak. Uh, I think Fortress this is, is a, this is a soapbox mon for for Ben, ladies and gentlemen. He hates Fortress. I think Fortress is so dog man. It, it, it's really really <laughs> bad. Um, I do think like you're missing some types. You don't have a fire type outside of fire two cannon. Um, maybe you could get Colossal. Is Colossal avail available? Uh, Colossal is literally better than Fortress. I know it's less points, it's literally better than Fortress. Even with more weaknesses. Um. Uh. Yeah, Colossal so this team's, real, this, yeah. this team's really slow, in my opinion. You've got Ogre Pond Wellspring as your fastest guy, I believe. Uh, at 110. Which can't have a scarf. It can't have yeah, a scarf. Yeah, it can't have a scarf. So, like... You're, you're operating in, like, a lower speed tier here. You've got Swampert, who's, like, pretty good. you got OK Pivoting. Uh, you got U-Turn, Wellspring, U-Turn, Hydreigon, Volt Switch, Foro. Ugh. Volt Switch, Vigavolt, Volt Switch, Palmot. I think Two Cannon gets U-Turn. I would be shocked if it didn't. And then Swampert gets Flip Turn, obviously. Uh, so, like, you can theoretically get out of there. Although, like, I don't know how often all of them are going to be running the... Uh, flip turn uh you're very strong specially physically you're not doing a ton you got wellspring you got palmot it's just like these terror captains I i've seen vicavolt work i've seen two cannon work before but they're, they're not like wowing me you know there's like some really special terror captains now and th 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 these aren't like crazy ones um you know the the, the terror captains they're unique like I, I'm, I'm excited to see them work, but like I'm not super like scared of them either. When I see them, uh, the, the the team slightly has a fire weakness, ever so slightly. The only resist being Hydreigon and Swampert. Uh, usually, fire types take advantage of Swampert. I found they carry grass in some way, whether it's like a Solar Beam, Mental Herb, or I, I've or, or like a lot of fire types get Grass Knot or something along those lines. Uh, I find that Swamper isn't like a super crazy switch in. So then you, know, you have to bring your Hydreigon in. I don't know how you're going to feel about that. But I, I do think like Navigated Well, this team has like the ability to be really good. Like all these Pokemon, except Fortress in my opinion, are viable. I could see them coming on a week to week basis. I, I, I don't dislike this team. I just think the teams above it are better. I think we've kind of reached, uh, this is 8th I think. I think we we took a, a leap from nine to eight, and we have like an actually viable team here. What do you think, Zah? Yeah, I agree. I have this one seven. This is the first one that has like both 
Goldango and Ogre Pond Water, I think, are, like, near top-tier guys. Like, I've grown to think these are really good, versatile... Ogre Pond Water is crazy. Like, Water Immunity plus Water Stab plus Grass Stab. It might actually be worth the points it's at, which I didn't used to think, but I've come around that it, it might actually be, like, 170. Goldango might actually be cheap at 160. Goldango is, is a really crazy guy, like... Once you get out of your mind that it has to be to protect hazards and you just use it offensively or defensively as setup or bulky trick scarf and then, you know, with recover, it's really good. Blood Moon, if played well on a week to week basis, can be devastatingly strong, just breaking slow things. Um, it can still operate on like 10 health because it's. For some reason, two points over 50 speed, which matters, and you run a, you can use the speed on it to outspeed base 60 speeds and just get that Blood Moon off and KO physical walls that are trying to block your Ogre Pond, right? And Hydreigon, I think, sometimes gets underestimated because it is quite strong. It's a very good choice Scarf user. It's a very good choice Specs user. There's some stupid physical sets you can do. It sucks it doesn't have Roost anymore, but it has surprising bulk. Like, you can use the ground immunity. You can use it as um, the fire resist, as Ben mentioned, they need. It can it can do quite a bit of things because it has a little bit more bulk than it seems like it would. Uh, and Gardevoir, you can do weird trace things. Trick on multiple Pokemon here can be very annoying to open things up for set up Ogre Pond, set up Goldango. Um, be below that... As Ben mentioned, Palmont is funny with Terra Electric for the double shock thing, which is similar to what you see in Nat Dex with Moltres with Burn Up. It is pretty effective. It's a very strong move, and I think Palmont is uh, can be something that comes there. We get his decent spear tier, has priority, stab close combat, and then that stab double shock with the Terra is pretty strong. I don't know what the second one would be. Um, it's fighting. Oh, so it's just stabs. I don't think that's terrible. I think that's fine. Because there's not going to be anything that resists electric and fighting. Um, just don't fight Lando T, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, any poison grass type. It has ice punch. It has ice punch. It has ice punch. And I, I like Swampert. Um, not, yeah, I like so just Swampert as like a, It just is not so much as something that resists a type, but more as something that's just... It's very, very bulky. Like, if you play against this and you don't have the grass move, it, it's sad it doesn't have recovery because it would be a top-tier Pokemon if it had, re like, real recovery. But um, this thing can come in and absorb... This on a team with Blood Moon and Goldango, like, things that need those slow flip turns to get their big attacks off. Yeah, it's Swamper nice. getting you th Yeah, Swamper getting you three turns... Sometimes I think when, when you have, like, offense like this, like, this is trying to be an offensive team, it just doesn't have the speed it needs to be a top-tier offensive team. Getting two or three turns from something like a, just off the top of my head, like an Iron Crown or a Swampert, or you don't always need the regenerator pivot, but, you just need three turns to get attacks like, like off. The, like the Vicavolt, a slow Vicavolt, I like the Vicavolt here for that, yeah. too. I actually yeah. think Vicavolt's so the main Terra on this team. I think Vicavolt's gonna end up coming the most, is my guess. Vicavolt, like we said before with the, with the uh, what's it called, the Rotom, if you just go pure electric on this thing, it's pretty, I, like, impactful. I wish it was electric. Uh, I'm stuck it, input electric. It's not it's, electric? It's got three it's types steel and it's not electric? It's steel, it's steel Fairy and Rock. I wonder what, what's Rock for? I, I, I don't know. I... Fires, um, I guess. Fire types. But I like I like Vicavolt. Um, I like I Gardevoir has Trick Room. There's a pretty good Trick Room mode on this team between Vicavolt and Blood Moon. I think if you have Blood Moon, you should have like a, a relatively decent Trick Room setter. And we could do that with Gardevoir, but maybe something with more bulk because I don't think Goldango has it. No, I think Gardevoir um, can Trick and Trick Room and then. Healing Wish, though, if it needed to. Yeah, that's not a bad set. Maybe if we could if we could turn the Fortress, I guess we need the spin, right? So we can't do anything yeah, about that? That's the problem. With the, that's why I suggested Colossal. Uh, the, the problem yeah. with Fortress is it's your only... It, I believe Fortress is your only removal. Maybe Toucan gets Defog. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's bad. It's bad removal. I, I think you're going to get yeah. Hazard stacked, dude. I, I, I don't know what... I, and it could, yeah. 
And, so and that's, I, you've that's got a bunch of guys. That, weak point, yeah, right? you've got a bunch of guys that don't want to run boots. Like I don't. Ogre Pond can't run boots. I really don't like boots. Golden Go. I don't love boots. Ursaluna Blood Moon. Uh, I think High Dragon with boots is worse, and I think Guard of War with boots is pretty bad too. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real with Leech City, like Lion City. Like uh, Serena is in the same tier and is a free agent. Just get Serena. It's yeah, you'd have, you'd have you'd have two grasses, but Serena's literally. 65,000 times better. You'd be weaker... I mean... Actually, Fortress is already weak to fire. You'd have the same amount of weaknesses to fire. Yeah, I, 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 I mean... Would... Just, to, just to base on typing, if you could do something... If you could get, like, Colossal, like you mentioned, and then maybe, like... I don't know, like, Car Bank or something, just as a good Trick Room setter, I think your team could have a cool mode like that. And it's not a gimmick when you have Blood Moon. Like, it's a real payoff to... Yeah, no, uh, we've, seen it, we've seen it win the title last year. Well, Seth, what, well yeah, Neon? but Seth farmed Neon with uh, yeah. Trick Room plus Blood Moon. Yeah, but yeah Blood, this, Blood this, team, this, this, this team should definitely make the playoffs, I think. I, I think yeah. you should go out yeah, and you like, probably need some more team. speed. Yeah, like you probably need some more speed if you can find it. Maybe Palmont could be something else because like Vikavol might just be better as a Terra. Um, maybe he's gonna revive. Uh, do we have a revival blessing legal or is it banned? No, still? it's banned. Which I think is it's lame. Banned? I, okay. I, I, they say it's for like doc reasons. I think I don't know. Just put another death. Put another death or another like a kill. I, 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 I feel like yeah. revival blessing should one hundred percent be allowed. It's really not broken yeah. in like any capacity, and it makes Terra yeah. Rabska, who I like, much better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, good team overall. You know, missing a few types has a few weaknesses, but overall it should should work pretty well. Golden Go is really really good. Uh, I will say something sneaky that some people might do, so you might want to be careful about it. Uh, you don't have a grounded poison. It doesn't affect too many of your mods, but you don't have one. I'll say that much. And uh, T spikes. Even if it only affects a few of your mods, are very, very annoying. Even if it's only on your Swamper or your Ogopon or your Blood Moon, I th I find them to like no matter how few like if it's, even if it's two mods being affected by them, I find that it can be very annoying for the opponent to have to deal with them. Um, and You're I would be super fairy weak in general. Like super yeah, I fairy. I was I was about to say that. I would be worried about Moonblast. Just spam. I, I know you have Golden Go, but a lot of fairies have a like a coverage move, whether it's Shadow Ball or something. <laughs> I will be worried about Moonblast spam if I was you. I think Moonblast uh, could spam through your team because Fortress coming in on a Moonblast, it's going to take fucking 45, bro. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's not real. It's not real. It, it, it's, it, you, you run a soft vest and it'll take 30, but then your Fortress is four attack. What are you even doing? You're fake. It's uh, I, <laughs> I, I, If I was you, I'd drop the Fortress. That's my recommendation. Um, I think with that, we'll move on to the next team. A team that I think I have higher than you. If I remember correctly, yeah, I have I have whoopers at nine. Yeah, and this is what seven. So you know, two off, yeah. not terrible. Um, I like Roaring Moon plus Iron Moth a lot. I think that's a killer one two, and I think the third pick is also excellent in Dawn fan. I'm a huge, huge Dawn fan believer. I'm a big fan of Enamorous Therian. I wish it was Terra. It's not, but I'm a huge fan of it. I think it's a very, very dangerous Pokemon. I think it sets up and can be dangerous. I think even without setup, spec sets are dangerous. I think Assault Fest sets are pretty good as well. Uh, Mian Chao is pretty good. Mesprit is like sneakily kind of uh, kind of goaded in my opinion. Um, I think you know the pivoting on this team is pretty excellent uh, with Mian Chao, with Mesprit, with Magnezone, with Roaring Moon, with Moth. You know, like, the real Pokemon, the Pokemon that are going to be coming a lot, are going to be pivoting. Other than, like, Donphan, Skarmory, your walls. Which is, like, uh... It, it's, like, fine. It's not great, obviously. Skarmory's here... I, like, Skarmory's decent, in my opinion. Um, I, I've seen some pretty cool Skarmory sets in PBO. I, like, I've, it has Swords Dance, so there is that. It has Swords Dance Weak Armor, I'm pretty sure. I've seen that work. Uh, shout out, I think, the Toronto Star Raptors. Um, but it has spikes, which is really nice. It has recovery, obviously. You've got your uh, removal in Dawn Fan. You've got sticky webs with a Raquinid if you want, but I think a Raquinid's just really strong in general. Uh, with Terra, it's better, obviously, but without Terra, I think a Raquinid still holds value um, with webs and also, you know, just being able to fire off strong water moves in general. 
And it's also pretty fat on the Spadef side. It can take Spadef hits pretty well, and it can recover HP with Bleach Life. Bayonet and Ice Q are here. Uh, Ice Q, I think you have to respect as a Pokemon, because uh, if you don't, it has a chance to sweep you, just because Ice is so good offensively, and it actually gets really fast with its uh, head broken, and at plus six, obviously, it's going to start killing stuff. Uh, Bayonet, I think, is pretty bad. Um, it's not super viable in any way. It doesn't have Prankster, I believe, in regular form. No. So you're kind of just no. sitting with a you're kind of just sitting with a fake mon. Kind of holds the team back a little bit. Then that's your ghost, in my opinion. Um, I'm interested to see these Terras work because I think Magnezone with Terra is actually like kind of good. Like I think Magnezone hasn't been drafted in PBO ever. So now that it, it can Terra, we're actually letting it uh, do it, which is kind of cool. Um, there's like a pretty decent gap in speed, if I remember correctly, between Bien Xiao and Mesprit. But I still don't like. I still like the top tier speed guys. Uh, I wish the Magnezone had Terra Fire. I wish the Magnezone um, had more offensive Terras than defensive. I think that would make it much better if it's going to be a Terra Captain. I do think this guy has like four or five Pokemon that want to be Terra and can't be. I would probably take Terra. I think you have the wrong options. Like I think you have even if you have the right Pokemon here, you have the wrong options. I think the Mesprit shouldn't be Terra, and probably the Enam could be, or like even Ice Q could be, or Araquanid could be. But um, I think like Magnusum doesn't even necessarily need to be Terra, and it could be one of those three or all three of them. However, the points work out. Probably not Enam plus Araquanid. I don't think that would be uh, working. But, uh, yeah, I like the pivoting. I think this team's actually pretty strong. Mian Shao plus Roaring Moon physically. Enamor Sterian plus Iron Moth specially. Magnezone is a really strong special attacker. Pretty good walls defensively in Donphan and Skarmory. And for Spadef, you've got, like, a Raquinid. Mesprit can probably be a Spadef wall. I, 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 I personally am uh, kind of a fan of what they have going on here. What do you think, Zah? Um, uh, I don't like dislike this i don't think it's bad the terrors really are weird to me like there's like you mentioned mian shao therian or araquanid i feel like would all be better than both of what they have and i'm trying to figure out if they want the trapping from magnezone for something but then like moon has dark stab enam has ground stab so i like magnezone too uh but I, again I, i've said this with a couple of teams i just feel like we have and it's, a couple of them are on this team. Like, we have big things that can be these Terror Captains. And, like, I don't know what mess spirit is getting out of it. Because you already have a fairy, and the best thing you could do with this is probably make it a fairy or a water. Um, it's it's fairy like ghost, another... the two types. Okay, I guess we're ghosts to protect Skarmory Spikes, which I guess yeah, is terrible. Yeah, we're ghosts because we, we're ghost because Banat is so dog. Honestly, yeah. I would literally combine Banat and Ice Hue and make a real Pokemon, if you can. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I would like to see a better just... I like Mianxia. I re I really am interested in Terra Mianxia. I think I gave it to somebody in another league to use, because I think it could be good, even if it's just Fighting Fairy Ice. Or Fighting Fairy, maybe Electric or something. Uh, especially with Moon. So we should have like a... We have a fairy killer in Iron Moth. I wish that we had... I'm not a huge fan of defensive Pokemon that gets stuck on the field. I just think it requires a really high level of play and prediction. Like, if they double... If you know Skarmory's coming in on something and you can just double switch on it and it can't switch out and it has to hard switch again, I know... I know it can definitely work. I just don't love that. That's obviously why Corviknight is much better. I feel like we have mo most of our things that most weeks we're going to have to bring Donphan and Skormy, which are solid. But then we have two spots of fat guys that just sit on the field. And if, they, if they're if they threatened as one-hit KO, they got to switch into something else. Um, and then Enam would be better with the Terra. Uh, I think it's still fine. But it's like, it's like a strange Pokemon because it's so slow, but it doesn't have big bulk. So if it switches in on something, even if it resists it, if they have coverage, they can kind of just KO it with the next hit. Um, but it has, it has, it has okay bulk. Okay, it, has, it has oh. okay, but I don't feel like it's as much as it seems like it should. If yeah. you look at this thing and you feel like it should take hits better than it does. Yeah. But then on, whenever on you paper, use it... Yeah. 
on paper it's 74 hp 110 defense 100 spit f which like sounds decent um <laughs> Personally, when I run ENMT, I like max HP, max defense, calm mind. That's the set I like yeah. running. Yeah, you can do the setup stuff. I feel like if you use Therian in like games, it just always seems like it takes more damage than you think it's going to, even though you always have max health on it. It's like maybe it's because it takes rocks damage because all the items it wants to run aren't boots, but um, which could be alleviated if it could tear it into just the fairy type. But Moon is a crazy Pokemon. Like, the majority of the weeks, Knockoff is so good. It's such a good move. Like, Moon Might should be more points. Like, it's crazy easy to set up. Moth, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of. I feel like... Uh, I feel like people just run the booster set too much. And if you run this with Specs or Scarf... And you can do some interesting defensive things with it with the Spike set. And it has U-Turn. Uh, I think it has more applications. So hopefully they use it in, in a myriad yeah. of ways instead I of getting stuck in a sweeping set. I really like Moth. I've experimented with it a few times, and it's deceptively, you know, it, it, it's decept. It quad resists fairy, which is really, really nice. It's deceptively, I don't want to say tanky, but it can take a hit. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, it has Morning Sun. It has U turn. It has T spikes, and it has screens, or yeah. at least it one of them. It definitely has some defensive. Moth has some interesting applications. <laughs> I think people get pigeonholed, because it does have the big special attack set, but I think people get pigeonholed into it sometimes. I also still want, I know we said this last time, and I'll admit Diancy was probably the better Terra captain. I just want to see somebody run Araquan and Terra, because I think it would be good. But, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I like a lot of the pieces on this team. Like I said, I think Moon is, like, damn near busted. Like, it might be, like, a top five, top seven thing we have on the board. But, um, I feel like this team can get out of position a little bit too easy for me. Like, I can see this getting swept a number of times because it just gets out of position. So that's why I had it still as a playable team, like definitely a playoff adjacent team. And I wouldn't be surprised if they make it. But um, I don't think it can compete with like the top four or five. All right. And with that, we'll move on to the team at number six. The Luscious Low Punnies. Okay. So this is a team... Uh, Mary had to make some makeup picks, so that's why even though she had a high pick, she ended up with like Treads and Latios, which I still don't think ends up being a very good one-two punch. Uh, she's got Clefable, who I have been underwhelmed by a little bit uh, this generation, if I'm being honest. I think it's kind of uh, struggling to take hits at times. Uh, you gotta really EV it correctly and know what they're gonna bring. Um, but I do really like the Terror Captains. Killer Wattrell and Glastrier are killer Terror Captains, especially with Porygon 2 there to set some trick rooms for your Glastrier. I really like that. I like the Spide Ops for the Sticky Web. Uh, Azumarill and Blaziken, you know, they're both, like, theoretically strong, uh, and Azumarill has that, like, Whirlpool action it can do. I'm just personally not a huge fan of those two, but, uh, you know, this team has, like, the bones of being very good. Obviously a good removal option in Treads. Uh, this team has no Spiker other than Spide Ops, I think. And the Rockers are Weak Clefable and Iron Treads. So the Hazards aren't like the big greatest on this team for sure. Um, this seems kind of slow. Uh, is it? Or is that, I have that in my notes for no reason. No, this is pretty fast. It's got Kilowatt Trail into Latios into Treads. That's fine. That's perfectly viable. I think, uh, is it from Treads to Blaziken is what I was talking about? Yeah, Treads to Blaziken is like a 26 point speed gap. Um, obviously Blaziken gets speed boost, so, but th then that speed, like the speed gap doesn't get fixed when you get the plus one speed boost. It just makes you faster than Kilowatt Trail, right? So, like, the speed gap still exists there from that, like, 100 point mons are all going to be adamant. Uh, uh, I think, like, you know, the, the, the synergy is kind of there. Like, the Steel Dragon Fairy Core, the top three, I like that. Uh, there's no Grass type, so there's no Fire Water Grass Core, but I, uh, I think Azumarill is your only water is interesting. I don't know if I love that, uh, kind of way of going about things. You, Porygon 2 and Weezing, they're walls, and they do have, like, a form of recovery, but they do kind of just sit there at times, it feels like. I'm worried about that. There could be just some sitting there. But, you know, the, the pivoting on this team, uh, Latios flip, treads with Volt. 
You got the U-turn Blaziken, the U-turn Killo slash Volt Switch. It usually doesn't run Volt Switch because it grounds. A U-turn Spidops. I think Spidops might actually come more than we think. Um, I don't know. I think this team's good, but it, it doesn't necessarily wow me. What do you think, Zah? I have this one higher. I definitely think that this is... Uh... His team has a lot of Pokemon that I think... I think Latios is a lot better than a lot than most people definitely in our community think that it is. I agree. Requires, I think Latios is good. Yeah. It requires tact and like a, a, a player of this skill level with a Latios. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like the kill leader. Honestly, in the in the whole league. Like, it's very good at picking things off. It was Just top three in Stargazer last season and no one cared, which was very crazy. Yeah, yeah. if... Uh, the Spadef drop is such a big thing that just makes it get kills for just no reason whatsoever. And it's a 50%. Yeah, it's not like it's a... It, and it Skulls, we know, is ubiquitous, and that's a 30% chance, right? It's a yeah, 50% yeah, no. chance to drop Luster Spadef. Per- you, you farm teams with... like like you, you would farm this team. This team that she has would be farmed by Latios because it doesn't have a dark type, I'm recognizing. Yeah. Um, I, I like Specs Latios a lot. I think Specs is killer, and you just farm as hard as you can. Yeah, um, it's a classic. It's a classic scarf Pokemon. Uh, the addition of Flip Turn makes it really good. Soul Dew, as I've come to enjoy Soul Dew, like like I think type boosting items are quite good. So the fact you get both stabs just for free, um, always a setup threat, still has recovery, uh, much better than people I, I think in just this general community think that it is. I like his. I like a zoom rule. It sucks. It doesn't have flip turn. If they give this thing flip turn next gen, I think it would shoot up like twenty points easily. Um, I really like the trapping set, especially if people don't. It, it's just really good one for one, sometimes two for one removal. Because if you get out on something that can't switch out and they don't know it's coming, they just die, and there's nothing they can do about it. And then like you can't really ever prepare for that because then it's just choice ban. It kills you in one hit. Uh, I think the belly drum set most of the time isn't. As really that great but it's a very good av mon it's a good choice band mon it has a lot of good sets and we haven't really seen it much that i recall um it's also a trick room on it's very slow so you know you you're gonna get the then the belly drum set becomes a lot more dangerous and we have porygon 2 maybe the best trick room center in the history of pokemon here so that's definitely a mode on this team, yeah. right? I will say Porygon 2, I don't think has teleport, so it's going to be have to hard no, switch. It, it, it doesn't anymore. It doesn't have teleport anymore. So he's going to yeah. have to hard switch after setting up Trick Room, yeah. which is a little annoying. Yeah. Uh, you know, we hard switch into eject button something right into whatever we need. Yep. Um, I will, this seems slightly weak to rock types. Uh, the only resist, it is a quad resist, but it's treads. I think treads is very important on this team, obviously. It is the yeah. first pick. Yeah. Um, Treads holds a lot of the resistances together, in my opinion. Yeah, and then the fact that they have the Blaziken is another thing. I think she kind of showed last season what it does. It just it just takes more positioning because it has to get the speed boost off. And I don't think you always want to run protect because that can very easily be taken advantage of. But Blaziken, you don't yeah. have to win the game. You just get everything low and then you win at the end of the game. Like it's one of those like Spectrish Emons where you don't really have to win. You just have to play even for half the game and then you have blaziken and they don't so a yeah, uh, good I, priority azumarill jet punt uh aqua jet like i i like this team I, I wouldn't it's definitely definitely a cut above everything else that we've seen i think i think this is like a kind of a split into the more upper echelon teams um i do think but like, um, it, go ahead yeah go ahead. like people people said she didn't do anything with blaziken last season i do think that's unequivocally untrue she cleaned up a yeah, lot that's of games true. she cleaned yeah, up a lot a of lot games it is good yeah she she did well with blaziken I, and people seem to forget what, it cleaned up a lot of games it wasn't at the top of the kill leaderboard but it still did good it definitely wasn't bad it, yeah. it was cleaning up at the end which is what blaziken does so uh, yeah. you know it, it, this team's kind of in her element i think i, I think it's good for sure yeah uh, it, i like it I yeah like not, it. not not like eye popping or anything but good solid no but the team the team last season wasn't either this is the same general kind of team that went yeah, eight no last same, season same, or same whatever thing, seven low, and one yeah seven and one this the same thing low ponies did last season i wouldn't be shocked if she gets a similar result we'll see yeah <laughs> moving on to the team at number five i believe the abbotsford agrons okay <laughs> so this is really interesting from the abbotsford agrons they picked really really uh 
quite oddly this season. So this team has good hazards, obviously. Quagsire plus Hammerot, uh, plus, you know, Heatran for rocks, plus, uh, you know, potentially Sneasler with T-Spikes, good removal with Cyclozar, and you can bounce it back with Espeon. You've got a nasty, nasty Pokemon in Spectriere that's always threatening to teams, especially if they don't have a normal type. Uh, pretty good Terra Captains in Arboliva, Espeon, and Trap Hinch. You know, pretty pretty good speed tiers. Spectriere down into Sneasler, down into Espeon. Uh, it seems like uh, Cyclozar was up there as well. And I think there's a, a, a gap between Espeon and the next person, if I'm looking at it correctly. Fez is, 90, Fez is 99. Fez is 99, so that's not horrible. Um, although Fez doesn't run... I mean, maybe it could run max speed. I wouldn't run at max speed most of the time. Um, but yeah, I, I love the hazards. I think the offensive pressure is, you know, just okay. I think, like, Spectre and Sneasler is really good together because Sneasler can deal with the dark types and then open up Spectre. Uh, I think Heatran offensively is really, really good, but I think Abbotsford likes defensive Heatran. Uh, but he should run it offensively this season a lot, in my opinion. Um, I think, like... You know, Cyclozar is really good at, at um, spinning, and it's also a really good pivot. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll get into the major weakness, what kind of holds this team back. This team is cataclysmically weak to ground types, in my opinion. The only way to deal with them is an Arboliva that, would, that can only Terra out of a ground weakness. It doesn't have a Terra that's, not, uh, that, that, that's still uh, resistant to ground. Uh, ground types, like... like Ground moves, steamroll. No resistances outside of Arboliva, no immunities. Um, and really no Pokemon to take the Earthquakes. It would have to be Quagsire, like a max defense Quagsire. Uh, ground 4 Trap, round 4 Trap Inch, a little bit troll in my opinion, but I know why he did it, because he thought a lot of other people were going to take it, and he kind of wanted to use it. Um, I think, like, this team, it has decent pivoting with Sneasler and Cyclozar, and uh, Pheasantipity, and Samurott Hisui. A lot of pretty good things going for it. Um, I think Arboliva is just so important on this team, specifically because of uh, those uh, reasons. And I, but I do think this team will struggle at times defensively, because Arboliva has so much on its shoulders, and then Quag uh, really has to probably come more than he would want. Um... Uh, I do like the recovery between Quag and Fez. I, I'm hoping he can open up Heatran to be offensive more often. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, my, my main issue with the team is the massive, massive ground type issue. Uh, what are you thinking? And also, obviously, uh, the to... Sneasler has the grassy seed with Arboliva, which is a nice combo. Yeah, I have this one higher than you do. I think the the combination of Spectre or Sneasler and Hasui and Samurott is so strong that it could be like you and me on the team, and it would still be devastating. Just those three guys, especially with like this level of player having access to this level of just ubiquitous strength, to where you don't even have to think about it. You can run the same set every single week and you win. Um, trapping is really strong. Not, not I, I meant to say the word trapping. Uh, Trap Inch is not Doug Trio, but even if it's half as good as Doug Trio, like if he can use it half as well as a Doug Trio, if you can remove the one thing that stops Spectrier, you win. That's that's the end of the game. If you can yeah. remove the one thing that stops Sneasler, that's the end of the game. You win. And um, it's not like, that hard on this team to position it because Sneasler imagine absolutely forces. Yeah. Imagine Trap Inch comes in on the dark and Terra bugs and First Impression murders it and then Spectre just gets free reign because the dark is yeah. dead. So for some of the um, younger or newer PBO people that have never seen Trapping because it hasn't been legal in, you know, 10 years. Um, the the amount of, like, the amount of uh, game planning it takes to avoid that, it, it you say, oh, you just run Shed Shell. It's really not that easy. Like he has a Sui and Samurai for knockoff, Cyclozar for knockoff, like he has stuff all over the place. If you're taking an important item off a physical or special check, like it can't run uh, leftovers, it can't run berry, resistance berry, that in and of itself is a big deal. Like there's a huge reason why all this shit is banned every generation everywhere after three, because it really is 
that good. Um, now, it's still a trap inch, but it, it does have 100 attack, so if it terra grounds, that's 150 attack on 100 base power earth, Earthquake, right? Um, the ground weakness is bad. Uh, Arbeliva has really good stats, so it's a pretty decent resist. Uh, it's definitely better as a special wall, but I gotta admit, I looked at its physical defense. I feel like whenever I play this or use it, it seems like it folds to physical hits, but it doesn't have to. It actually has good stats. Um, I kind of wish there was a way to make the Quagsire Terra, just because I think Terra Quagsire is pretty good. But Espeon, if you take the shitty typing off of it, is quite good. Like, Fairy Espeon... Terra Fairy Steel Espeon e is devastating with Draining Kiss. I've used it. Yes. Uh, it, it crushes people. It yeah, it's, it's really good. If you get the typing off of it, the stats are great, the speed is great. Um, to people, it's just Psychic is so bad as a typing. Yeah. Um... Cyclozar, solid spin, very solid utility thing that has more offense than like things think it do, than you think that it does. Like there's a life orb set that's okay. Um, it sounds troll, but like I've been almost beaten at least by it before. And if you don't know what's coming, it's good. And I think Pheasant Dippity is pretty underrated. I think people are starting to realize how good this thing actually is. Uh, but this thing, this the speed, having that much speed on something this bulky and with disruption moves and the ability to poison everything just by you turning into it, ends up over the course of a long game with a skilled player like this using it to really add up to matter. Yeah. So the fact he has Poison Touch Sneasler and Pheasantipity, and he's got Regenerator, and then he's got the pressure at the end of the game with like three super strong cleaners, Ter Terra Espeon, Sneasler, Spectrier. Um, tons of good priority from Hasui and Samurott. Defensive, I I think you could run, I, I might be somewhere in between. I like, like max HP, max special attack, Heatran, something of that nature. Um, and it just, again, fire offense is so good. So even if you have minimal, like a uh, like decent amount of, H, of uh, special attack on this thing, you Magma Storm stuff, it just falls to the ground. So... I like this team. It'd be better, like it'd be better if it had a flying type. Like, I think I discussed with Nightmare maybe putting just like a random type on an Espeon to be flying, but or you could be a random flying type on like an, or on one of the other ones that you could just throw it on. But I think he can probably play around it, and if it becomes an issue, he'll just make a move in the middle of season. Like, yeah, I'm guessing um, a, a mid-season move is going to come to make it so ground isn't so yeah. devastating, and then this team's going to be really but, good. I think there's a world where we see that uh, somebody who has experience with trapping, like I think that Abbotsford does, will sh show why it's this, like, it's really stupid. Like, if you've never, I've used a Doug Trio team in draft, it was like plus 40. Like, it's really easy to use if, if you're even like a competent player. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the number one seed. Now we're getting a team like, I wouldn't be shocked if this is the number one seed. Just because Spectre or Sneasler are assuming Samurai plus trapping. Yep. All right. With that, we'll move on to a team that I think I had probably two spots higher than you. Something like that. Two or three. Yeah, I think I had this six. Yeah, this is four. So this is two spots higher. We have the Tennessee Tyranitars. So this is a team that I looked at it. And I initially had it a little lower, for sure. And then I looked at it, I looked at the type charts, I looked at the speed tiers, and I thought, you know what? I kind of really like this team. So this team has, in my opinion, eight, like, high-value mons. Eight really, really good, like, these could come every week type of mons. In Terrapagos, Miascarada, Dragonite, Mew, Tinkaton, Rotom Wash, Okie Doki, and Thunderous. And then uh, two mons that I think actually have viability to potentially come on a week-by-week -week basis. Like maybe the week you're facing Spectre, you bring Munchlax. And I think Thwacky, if you want the Grassy Terrain one week maybe, could come. And you have a Karkul, who has Rapid Spin. Uh, probably just for a second spinner, so uh, you know you could make your opponent think, oh, maybe Tropicos won't have Rapid Spin. But um, I think like you know th th those top eight are just really good. Thunderous, a really nice Pokemon. It's got Prankster. It can also be Nasty Plot. Uh, really strong. Okie dokie. Pretty cool Terra Captain. I know it's tearing up like RU right now. Uh, Poison. Uh, it's got that. Uh, it's got Toxic Chain. It's pretty strong. It's got the bulk upsets. Tinkaton is really good utility. You know, pretty good uh, turning around here with U-Turn on Meowscarada. 
you turn a uh, volt switch on uh rotom wash uh you turn on mew potentially literally anything on mew tinkaton can uh baton pass thunderous can you turn or volt switch dragonite you know strong e speed priority meow scarada obviously very strong as well terapigo is probably your main special attacker outside of thunderous i think this team just has a you know a very well-rounded thing going on uh for it um i think uh you know the speed tiers they're not special, but they're solid. You know, you got Meow Scarada, you got, got Meow Scarada, you got Thunderous, you got Mew. You know, you're going from that nice, that 120-ish to that 110-ish to that 100. And then you go down to the to the 80s, to the 90s. Or you go from, to Tinkaton, and then you go to Dragon. You know, it, it's nothing to write home about, but it's like nice, solid. This is like a, a quintessential team, in my opinion. It's, it's like got what it needs to have, in my opinion. Uh, Mew, it, but it also can do some cool stuff because it has uh, Terrapagos and it has Mew. So you can come up with some, you know, uh, really cool stuff there. Uh, maybe at times this team lacks immediate special damage. But I, I, I think, like, you know, it's got all the key typings, even if, like, you know, your Grass and Fire are kind of really weak Pokemon. Um, I like it. I think this team, you know, it, it's it's doing what it needs to do. What do you think, Zah? Uh, I definitely like this team. It has some things. I think people are, over the last couple of months, coming around on how good Terrapagos is. Terrapagos so has catapulted first, up rankings, yeah. Yeah. The, the first time I used this, I look at the stats in the move pool, and I was like, what? people were all running it as just support. I'm like, run this offensively. What do you... I don't understand. It's got a 120 base power, no drawback move. Just be rest talk, and it sweeps everything. So that has all kinds of sets. So we probably have that too low of points, like multiple like big drafts. This is going in the first round. So this is not a weird pick, right? Meow Scarot is a crazy Pokemon. Knock off, maybe the best move in the game. Stab knock off is ridiculous. Uh, get stab on everything, obviously. U-turn, tremendous speed, spike setter, like better Greninja, essentially. Um, Dragonite is like a player's pick. Like a, if somebody picks this early, you know uh, they're good. Uh, Dragonite is still one of the scariest setup threats. Like, you give this thing one turn, it just wins. Multi-scale is crazy. Troll Dragonite has always been a good set. It has Thunder Wave. It still has Roost. It has huge bulk. It can just be so annoying to a team with, like, Dragon Tail on top of some spikes. This whole team, if if you haven't looked at it, is, like, the best T-waving team ever. It has, like, six things that have it and are good at doing it. Pryo with Thunderous, Wash, Tinkaton, Dragonite, and Mew, I think. Um, uh, pretty solid hazard setters that force things out. Like, Tinkaton Wall, something gets up to the rocks easily. Meow Scarada forces the switch. You spike up, you can roll that, run that Troll Dragonite set. You're Thunder Waving everything. Priority Thunder Wave, I think, is really strong whenever i play it it's so annoying to play against because it thunderous makes you switch out on something that like it can't beat but you can't take thunder wave on your iron valiant so you have to switch out on it um thwacky like undercover choice band is like really good priority if you wanted to bring it for that and then the terrain plus terrapagos healing it up pretty good um okie dokie terra i've never seen it i've always heard it's really really good it called catapults it from like RU to like like a pretty viable OU Pokemon, so we're gonna see it. Um, the debating if it was better on Mew, uh, probably, but this is fun here. We so allow let's, Mew. let's do this. I don't think we allow. No, we do. We, we do allow Mew. No, we do. Sheesh. Yeah, we, we do. Should, you, yeah, we you do. should think about Mew then, because Terra Mew is crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think he probably definitely did, but like Okie Dokie, he's definitely funnier. So I'm de if he starts losing, I'm sure he'll switch it to Mew. Yeah, I mean, Okie Dokie's um, really good, too. Know. Yeah. yeah. Okie Dokie, I definitely think, can do... Poison fighting is good. And if you just yeah. make this, like, what are the terra types in this? Is it fairy, fairy and or dark. water? Or... Fairy oh, yeah, and I think dark fairy is good. Too. I think fairy... I'm sure there's a reason for dark to stay up not. Uh, psychic community, because it's squad weak to psychic. Yeah. That has to be my guess. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this. Like, the, it, I wouldn't be shocked if this could win the championship. I just... Um, yeah, it's the special damage, I think something we should keep in mind, like a math thing for people. 120 no drawback power move, even off a lower special attack, is as strong as like Spectre's Shadow Ball. Because it's such a stronger attack yeah. that it just evens out. So 120 no drawback. You've seen how fight strong like a close combat is. Like 
it's it's a crazy move and then you get the combine off for free like you'll see like newer players or like if you don't know what Terrapagos does you're gonna see offensively I think on this team what it actually does um but yeah I like it they, we're getting to the point there's nothing really wrong with this like you can't maybe it's not quite as flashy as some of the ones we're gonna talk yeah. about I mean obviously there's it has also three unevolved mons so it can't be like number one because yeah, like there's, I think there's... I think I think me and Ben both subscribe to the eight good yeah. guys theory. Eight that, that, good guys is enough variety. That, I don't that's think what you I need said at the beginning. Yeah. Eight good guys. Yeah. Like eight, this team has eight viable Pokemon. That's all you need for sure. Yeah, that's more that that gives you plenty of variety, and they can't just know what you're gonna bring. And then like Thwacky is definitely usable. Thwacky I, yeah, is. I, definitely I just wish usable. I just wish one of the eight was a fire type, maybe instead of Carco yeah. being the fire. Yeah. Although Carco uh, is bringable without Terra, though it's like it, it obviously can die in one hit. Although it has yeah, sturdy, yeah. I think. Yep. Um, All right, but yeah, that, with, that definitely good. Definitely. With good. that, we'll move on to the team I have at number three. I think you have this team at the uh, the pinnacle. So we're gonna move on to the team at number three. We have the Nevada Caterpies. So this team, very very. Uh, Strong, very, very strong. Good pivoting between Dark Rise, Scizor, Rillaboom, you know, Sylveon. Uh, all those guys are really not just like good pivoters, but strong pivoters. Uh, pretty good, pretty decent speed tiers, like the high tier Dark uh, uh, Dragapult into Dark Rai is good. Although you you uh, have a big jump then from Dark Rai down to Paldea Tauros, who honestly isn't a super real Pokemon, and then drop again down to Glamora. So like between Dark Rai and Glamora is pretty problematic. But you know you've got uh, good sustainability in the form of Sylveon. The grassy terrain plus Volcanion I think is really really good. Volcanion's you know a good Pokemon in my opinion uh, to have Terra. I think it's a really strong Terra captain. Uh, I think Mudsdale as a ground, as like a, a late a late round ground, is pretty decent. I like it a lot. I do think like the other two Terra Captains, Paldea, Tauros, and Glaceon, they're not like super real. I think you're going to bring Volcanion most of the time. Uh, I, I don't really love either of them. Glamora, um, I think is a pretty good Pokemon. It is your only removal and it is like your only spiker, I believe. So it, it, it's got a lot on its plate in order to be your, you know, your hazards and your hazard control. Remember that the uh, Scissor does have defog. Uh, Scizor, Scizor has defog, that is true. Uh, yeah. Yep. Alright, so yeah, the, uh, like, like, Scizor has defog, I guess, so there is that. Glamora offensively, I actually really, really like. Um, I know Caterpiece is thinking about making some, some changes. So, but, um... I, I, I do really like this team. I think yeah. this team, you know, it's got good support. You know, Dragapult can support Scizor and Darkrai for their setup, or can support Volcanion, so Volcanion can sit around. Um, Because uh, Dragapult has, like, mods it can actually screen for on this team. Um, Terra, Terra, uh, the Terra on Volcanion is ground. I think that's an okay Terra. I think, like, uh, I get why he didn't go Steel or Fairy, because his Steel and Fairy are very prominent, and his ground isn't. So, like, I, I understand why it's there. I think it lowers the impact of Volcanion slightly, potentially. Uh, the sustainability on this team, it's, like, only Syl Sylveon plus Rillaboom. And I guess Glaceon can also wish. But, uh, you know, specially and physically, this team's really, really, you know, it, it just packs a huge punch immediately. What do you think, it's, uh Uh Yeah, I had this one number one. Uh, some things I... I really care about priority, especially if you, if you think you're good and you have strong priority, you should be able to get into position to take advantage of that over your opponent. Uh, and, you know, we have Scizor and Rillaboom. Both, unfortunately, those priority moves are stopped by Steel types, which so you'd rather have, like, a not that it's legal, but a Palafin in that spot instead. But that's really strong and hard to deal with because that, that forces so many switches. And we have a Glamora here to take advantage of those forced priority switches. No matter what, they can always come in and threaten that. Um, I think getting Rillaboom this late is crazy. Like, I'm a huge... Everybody knows I love Rillaboom. I think it's just such a ubiquitous guy that can come almost every week and figure out something to do even if it's just a force and auto switch to a zapdos or something or a skarmory you can even take advantage of that and then um i agree with volcanian i in my heart i feel like maybe glamora would be better as the terra captain here 
Uh, not because I don't like the Volcanion Terra, but just because I think it would open up Glamour to do so much more offensively with a different type. And then you wouldn't have this situation where we always see this thing come and do nothing. Like, I know it should be good, and I know, like, somebody, like, listen, drop it in the comments for the algorithm why Glamour is good, but it never does anything in this league. And we said the same thing on the Valiance video last year, that I was concerned that this just doesn't do anything, and it didn't, it didn't really do anything that I can recall. Um, so maybe it, that would like, be a decent thought. Glamora last season for Valiance, it's like, it, it sneakily wins games. Sometimes just because the opponent has bad hazard control, like the, yeah, it, it, it like it, it beat Norwalk pretty bad, but like it's not obvious it's Glamora because like obviously there's a spike up and a T spike up, but you know the Glamora dies and you forget where those come from. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's what it, I'm saying though because it could still do that, but use its stats if it yeah. could just change the type to like anything. So maybe that would get more value because you want to use this because of its utility. But then if it had the utility plus you could it could do something else. It has it would an skyrocket. absurd special attacks that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Special, like if, yeah. if we yeah. could just get some attacks off with this thing, it would do subs, but it never gets its attacks off. Um Volcanion, I think like yeah, I understand I, the ground type to try to like block a Volt Switch and Mudsdale is not really that good. But um I think just Terra Water on this has a lot of value, like dropping the rocks weakness, but keeping the fire stab, but then having that super strong um, Hydro Steam. Hydro Steam. I think Volcanion is definitely one of the ones that's really hurt by it being one Terra type. Um, yeah. But I still think it's good. I'm not saying to change it. I just think I, if it was my team, I because I still think Volcanion is like even without any Terra, is still quite good, and the way Caterpies has used it, I don't feel like the fact it's Terra is going to change anything about the way he uses this Pokemon. Whereas yeah, if you were Terra... Like a, a yeah, if you, if you were Terra Glamora, it could totally change what you could do with it, and it might really skyrocket its stocks. Whereas, the, the especially the type he picked on Volcanion, I recommended Fairy for this because it's walled by dragons. Uh, it just can't hit them, you know, unless they have some secondary typing. So, or even if you were to stay up water, you could do more damage and maybe get the burn. But I think Fairy might be a little bit better. Um, but other than that, why I like it, it just has so much power. It can just... This thing, like I mentioned, like, we would come back around to this early. This team can just fall into wins with, like, five guys. Like, say, Darkrai hits a Hypnosis, you win. Dragapult gets one Dragon Dance off, you win. Scizor gets Swords Dance off, you win. Rillaboom gets Swords Dance off, you win. Sylveon's a really underrated, I feel like, nowadays win condition that's really easy to set up mid-game or late game. You get one Calm Mind on the defensive set, and you win. Um, Glimora, like you said, can fall into a Hazard's win. Um, Glaceon Loki is not bad as a Terra Captain. Like, for 20 points, it's actually okay. If you take away the bad typing, it has good stats. Um... But yeah, I really like priority. I like immediate power. I like being in control of the game. And it's very hard to take control of the game away from this team because it can force so many switches. And then it has auto hazards and Glamora, right? So in theory, this should work. Uh, and it's not so much player dependent in that I feel like almost anybody could get like two or three wins with this team if they're just like barely competent which i don't know if you can say that about any team so far outside of abbotsford's top three guys so that's why i, I was really keen on this team because i think i could do like the easiest damage with this team like you roll up with no prep time five minutes and this team still goes four and four in my opinion yeah i like it for sure i will say you know only Oh, ground resist is Rillaboom. But Rillaboom should come every weekend. It has the grassy terrain. You have no yeah. ground immunity, which is, you know, take and it or Mudsdale, leave it. And Mudsdale, if you, if you wanted to use Mudsdale, it's a pseudo, like, ground check. Ground, it gets yeah, the boost like, yeah, it gets a boost. And, like, who cares? about It, it doesn't do enough damage. All right. And with that, we are going to move on to the team at number two. Okay. We have the Vancouver Valiants here with their triple fairy core so uh this team has a crazy crazy six that it can bring every week 
It has Great Tusk, the best spinner, a really strong attacker. Greninja, you know, obviously a really good wind con a lot of the times. A Terra Ledge, an Enamorous, an Azelf, a Hydrapple. You know, the power on this team is just really, really nice. The two Terra Captains are insane. It really feels like he's taking advantage of the of the Terra here. Because he has Ledge, who is underpointed and allowed to Terra two types. While also being able to get one of the best low tier Terras that we allowed the past few seasons in Rev of Room. So now he has both. Both uh, can potentially be very, very dangerous. Uh, the pivoting on this team is a, a little lackluster, but he still has, you know... Uh, you turn on Azelf, you turn on Greninja. He's got uh, a Volt Switching Lantern or Flip Turn if he wants to. He's got a Parting Shot Rev of Room if he really wants to. Hazards, he's got Rocks. He's got, uh, you know, good Rocks options. He's got T-Spikes options. Only Spiker, though, is uh, Greninja. But it just the pure damage output from this team is definitely, you know, hard to hard to compete with, I would say. Um, I will say, you know, the, the team has no major weaknesses, because I put all the teams in the uh, type filter. This team isn't really weak to any types, obviously. There's no obvious weakness, in my opinion. Uh, dragons, like high-tier dragons, are going to struggle hard against this team because it's running with a triple fairy. Uh, I think the team struggles a little bit, maybe with sustainability. There's not, like, super good recovery. Uh, there's, like, pain split wheezing and recover high drapple. Uh, Sarah Lodge gets bitter blade, so there's that, at least. I think Lantern might get pain split. I'm not sure. And obviously, wait... Yeah, and obviously Wigglytuff gets Wish, but you don't have, like, a bunch of Recover Melons who can, like, spam Recovery. But it's still definitely, like, not bad sustainability, especially since Hydrapple has Regenerator. So you can, you know, get that passive sustainability there. So, you know, well, it, like, isn't the greatest hazards, it still has hazards. Well, it isn't the greatest pivoting, it still has pivoting. And the Pokemon themselves are just so overwhelmingly good and strong that I think this team is really a force to be reckoned with. What do you think, Saw? Yeah, I have this one three, so just a little bit lower. Um, pretty much I agree with everything positively, so just the, the concerns I would have about this team. It has a couple of guys that, if they're not played well, have the ability to like do nothing. Like We've seen Tusk do nothing for whole seasons, and not because he's not good, but because he's not brain-dead guy. Same thing with Enam. It can be, unless you're running Choice Scarf every week, I think this thing takes... People act like you can just you can just go specs every week, but again, that requires a team with a lot of positioning, and this team doesn't have the pivoting to to easily enable that to come in a bunch of times to get those hits off. So I think that that, unless it's positioned well, you're going to see turns where they try to switch this in on a prediction and it just dies and doesn't do anything. Um, I'm not saying that definitely will happen. I'm just saying I can definitely see a universe where that happens. Um, and same thing with uh, Greninja. It depends on if you're the Battle Bond guy or the Protein guy. Greninja is the hardest Mon here to do nothing. I think that's a guaranteed do something guy, so I like that. I think Serilage is the best Terra in the league. I think it's the best one available. Specifically because, as you mentioned, it has two types. What what types do we have? Fairy and Bug or Fairy and Grass? Fairy and I'm Grass. Guessing. Fairy and Grass, which are okay. the best ones. So it's like fine. Yeah. So those are definitely the the correct ones. It's people debate bug and grass. I don't think it really matters that much. I think you definitely want fairy and one of those two. Um, Zyrud is also really good. So I think this or Zyrud, but this was like twenty less points than Zyrud. So I think that probably makes it better. Serilage is so easy to set up and win with with two different setup sets. Or honestly, if it had a third set, you could convince me you're just Terra Ghost Poltergeist, and that would also be crazy. Um, I love Hydrapple. I, that's the only thing. Like, I, I this is definitely the right Terra Captains, but Hydrapple also is a crazy Terra Captain. I think Azelf has become undervalued because um, it is tough to draft this thing for that many points. But it has so many good sets. Um, Weezing underrated. The only thing again, I, I don't love defensive Pokemon that gets stuck on the field just because it's easy to predict what G Weezing is going to come in on, and if you can take yeah. advantage of that, like it's going to come in on your uh, close combat, right? So instead, you switch to your psychic type, and then yeah, what is this team? I will say, G Weezing is a luxury on this team, which is nice. It's not his only poison, and it's not his only fairy, so like yeah. it's not pivotal in my opinion, the G-Weezing, yeah. which, uh, which is a nice problem to have, in my opinion. Yeah. To have G-Weezing is like I, your... Yeah. 
I like Lantern too. I think Lantern is is underrated. I think it can do a lot of good stuff. Um, too bad Lantern doesn't have Wish. Lantern with Wish would be cool. Yeah, Lantern's um, good. Obviously, and I think like if people over prep for Sarah Ledge, they might run into a Reverum problem if Reverum. Yeah. Uh, Reverum yeah. is good. I want to see from Valiant. I think I said this a lot with uh, Durant last year that this doesn't just have to be that one set. It can run parting shot. It can do other stuff just so it's not so predictable what it's going to do. Not that it's not good at that thing, right? But yeah. um, I think sometimes it, a lot of times when I see the Reverb Room, it just misses winning. Like, oh, this thing's crazy. It killed three things. Yeah, but it always just misses winning and then you lose the game like 1 0. Um, so that's the only thing I'd be concerned about. But I'm really nitpicking. Like, it's just. The difference between this and I think uh, they've figured out what number one is, uh, Klefki's team and the one before it, is I can just see games where if you get too many predictions wrong because there's not a lot of momentum here, that you have to pl you have to be better to use this team. I don't think it's yeah. just like brain dead, easy wins. Like if this team goes four and four, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I also wouldn't be shocked if it's seven and one. But I just I think there's more variance like on this team than the other two that are in the top three. Yeah, because this team, uh, the, the pivots are usually fast. The only slow one is Lantern. I think Lantern's pretty important on this team, if I'm being honest. I think well, Lantern is good. good. Yeah, Lantern yeah. is good. I think, I think Lantern will end up being pretty important here. But uh, with that, we'll move on to the number one team. In the, in the preseason power rankings, post-draft, we have... The Frederick Klefkies, uh, coach by Orange, and they have just an insane, insane uh, top three, and honestly, an insane top six, if I'm being honest. Uh, Iron Valiant, Dio Speed, Garchomp, that's a crazy three to get. Those are three round one viable Pokemon that you have there. Uh, you get Empoleon, who's a really nice water and a really nice steel, you know, uh, Carrying those types, it has Roost, it has Flip Turn, it has Stealth Rocks, all that good stuff. And then you have Terra Zarude, who's really, really crazy. Uh, Poison and Dark, I think, are pretty pretty viable types. You know, Zarude can set up Sword Stances and Sweep Teams. It has U-Turn, it has good uh, uh, pivoting and all that. This whole team has, you know, decent pivoting with Empoleon and Zarude and Belly Bolt and Talonflame. And Quillfish, who also gets Pivot. Um, Belly Bolt is a really, really uh, insane Terra Captain as well, in my opinion. It lives forever. It's so fat. And then uh, because of Electromorphosis, it can also be really, really strong. Talonflame. I'm kind of down on Talonflame right now, just because uh, it usually ends up doing nothing, I find, and it kind of struggles to come to games at times just because it's so uh, <laughs> weak, usually, I guess is the best way I could put it. But uh, it is very fast. It is decent utility. And you can set up Sword Stance to potentially be offensively threatening. I know why it's here. You know, it's a pretty good speed tier as well. I, I don't hate Talonflame. I'm just down on it a little bit at the moment. Priagonal is your Rapid Spinner. It's a good low tier Rapid Spinner to have. I think, you know, th there's no Mon Wasted on this team for sure. That's why it's in number one, obviously. Indeedy is here basically to give the terrain to uh, Dio Speed. Uh, and maybe even Valiant could run like Expanding Force as well. Um, I, I don't imagine it comes to much games. It's also, you know, a normal type, so it's immune to Ghost, so there's that for you as well. I think Indeedee's pretty strong, if I'm being honest. I've had it before, and I've run Specs a lot. I think Specs Trick Indeedee is just really nice. It's utility while it's simultaneously being very, very strong in terrain. Uh, th th this team, you know, whether it be physically, whether it be specially, uh, I think the fat on this team is still decent because, you know, Kragnall's fat specially and it gets recover. I think, like, you know, Garchomp physically can be pretty fat. Uh, Belly Bolt's fat. Quillfish has Intimidate. Uh, I looked at the type chart. This team has the, the, the type chart on lock pretty much. Um, I, I think this team just all around very, very good, very strong. Uh, not a whole bunch of weaknesses, if I'm being honest, and very scary to have to prep for. Uh, what are you thinking? Uh, I helped with this one a little bit. I like it a lot. Um, I'm really up on Empoleon the last couple of drafts that I've done. I think this thing with recovery, the problem with it was always that it didn't have sustainability, right? But now it does. Uh, and that plus flip turn is really good. Four times ice resist to help with uh, the problems that we would have otherwise. Um, 
Getting Quillfish, this team didn't originally have Quillfish. I don't know who gave it back to us, but you made a mistake <laughs> because that really break. This was a much worse team when it didn't have the Quillfish on it. Now that it has that with the extra ac uh, access to spikes, and then definitely the best combination of Terror Captains maybe I've ever seen, like outside of things where like freaking Kiram can Terra. Like Zarud is probably the second best Terra Captain on anybody's board. Um, maybe, and I'll listen to, I, I prefer Serilege because I think it can win quicker, but Zarud is close. And then Belly Bolt might be the be like the fifth best Terra Captain that anybody has on their entire team because Belly Bolt's really good. And the fact he has Belly Bolt as whatever he needs, like the three most important defensive types for whatever. So he has any week, he has Steel with Recovery and Huge Bulk, Fairy with Recovery and Huge Bulk, or Water with Recovery and Huge Bulk. That's great. Like, that's just so useful. And um, Cryogonal, I think... It, like outside spinning, I think this thing is pretty good. Like I, I, I like uh, a lot of weeks. I would talk to Abbots for last year with it, and I'm like, you know, Cryogon kind of just wins this game because Ice Stab is so good, and then it's it's unusually fast and like decently strong, and then it can get entry points because of Levitate. Um, so a lot of recovery on this team. Jungle healing is rude. Gonna go crazy. Um, and then past just the obvious power of Iron Valiant, Garachomp, Dio Speed. Dio Speed still has Teleport, which I think is relatively viable on this if he wants to run the Expanding Force set. Which I want to be real, I don't, I don't think that's really that great. Like, I, I almost wish the only thing I would say is I don't know that the Indeedee angle is actually really needed. Like, maybe you could, but I don't hate it. It's not bad. I just think... A lot of times you could do something better with Dio Speed than like have specs on it because the utility I think is better. But um, the only thing that I wish was different is that our two best offensive guys could get off the field easier. Like I wouldn't have traded it because I like the spikes and the speed on Garchomp, but like Lando T also would have been really nice in that third spot. But um, th there's I, if Garchomp's probably better. I just wish that that could get off the field. That's the I, only thing that I would change. I told him Lando T, and he said he wanted Chomp. So it, yeah. it's just, just him personally. He likes good. yeah, he likes Chomp better I personally. Think, yeah, I think he needs the uh, the speed. It's definitely not wrong. I just I wish that Garchomp could get off the field. That's the only. But we have so much else between the the fourth, the five things below that. Um. And like I said, we can always run teleport on Dio Speed because it does force the switch, especially on that spec set. So yeah, I mean, that's, he essentially has yeah, that's three. First, I, yeah, pick, yeah, I'm picking nets. It's it's just yeah, a person. He, he essentially has three first round picks here. And I, yeah, I, I for think sure. this team is, I think this team is absolutely nuts because especially because the low tiers are actually still viable, which he yeah. managed to do, which is crazy. Uh, you were talking about Cryogonal. I think Cryogonal is severely underrated. I think this team has. If I think I'm it's good. I genuinely, I genuinely, that's one of my like things. I think Cryogonal is actually good. I think this team has six Pokemon over 100 speed, so it's very fast while simultaneously like having decent bulk along the way because Talonflame and Cryogonal can be bulky, and honestly, so can yeah. Zarude, and like so can Chomp. You know, you know what? So now it, you know what? Now that I think about it, the fact we have no priority means maybe we do need Indeedee. I didn't really look at that, but um, yeah. That, that is our one hole. We have Vacuum Wave Valiant. I don't think Zarud has Sucker Punch. Uh, you've got um, Vacuum Wave Valiant. You've got Aqua Jet Quillfish. You've and got uh, Aqua Jet Empoleon. You, you've got uh, Gale Wings Talonflame. That is true. Okay, that is true. Um, but, I mean, not the most it, reliable, but... Yeah. It exists. Because they, they should really just bring it back, man. The Gen 6. It's really not that good <laughs> anymore. I, I think I, they should I still I, I still think that priority flying would be good. I guess but you yeah, know they it, figured it out good, it wasn't even yeah. that it wasn't it wasn't even that good in Gen 6 they figured out like in the modern meta game I, I don't think people even use it much anymore. Yeah, I don't know. They should give it back. It was... You heard it. You heard it here game freak. Give it back. All right. And with that uh, I, I do think this team is the best team. I, I know you didn't have a number one, but I think this team's kind of crazy. Well, I, I um, helped make it, so I can't put yeah. it at number one. That would be disingenuous. Yeah. 
So uh, yeah, I mean this team, this team, in my opinion, has a lot, a lot of really good stuff going for it. And with that, that's going to be the preseason power rankings for the Stargazer division. Thank you for watching. Wait, 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 Ben, do you have do you have championship predictions? Oh yeah, let's do a championship prediction. I'm gonna go. Uh, I mean, I just put Orange at one. He hasn't won yet. Is there any reason not? Not to pick him. What's um, your final? Do you have a finals matchup? Who versus who and who wins? I'm going to go Klefki's versus Metal. That's going to be my it, prediction. Did, that's my pick, too. That's the same pick I have. Klefki's uh, over Metal in the finals. Klefki's versus Metal. That's what we got. All right. Thank you for watching. Peace.